sports, it was justified because I never thought, Nick Hanley, that I would walk in here today and that a 33-point comeback would not be the mm-hmm. first thing that we're going to discuss on an incredible weekend of sports that had that in Minneapolis. It had a snow game. It had an epic World Cup final. It had a pick six in overtime. It had a lateral walk-off. And all of a sudden, Dylan Riola may be in the mix for Nebraska. What a weekend. What an absolute weekend. Which, oh, by the way, also, in the, yeah, also in the NFL, you had 12 of the 15 games were one-score games. Mm-hmm. All 15 were 11 points or less. The sports, as they say, we're pretty, pretty good this weekend. You didn't mention college basketball. What the hell? What the hell? What was, uh, what was well, uh, Pete Nance. There you go. Okay. Pete Nance of North Carolina hitting a shot to send the North Carolina-Ohio State game to overtime. Again, you're going, okay, no, no it's fine. We don't need to talk about the Creighton in Nebraska yet. And that concludes the college basketball. No, come on, man. No, this is a positive. This th- is a good morning. That's a That was a bad Friday and a bad Saturday. That Vikings comeback. From a fantasy perspective, just let you know, because everybody wants to know about my fantasy football team, I'm sure. Of course. Uh, Kirk Cousins had, I think, six points midway third quarter. Six <laughs> fantasy points midway third quarter. Finished with 40. Are you in the playoffs right now? I'm in the Super Bowl next oh, week. Oh, okay. I don't even need to worry about tonight. I'm good. I'm good. But, yeah, that was that was ridiculous. The Patriots... And the category of probably, I don't even think this year, but in the last decade of what the hell were you thinking? (laughs) There's just moments in sports that we always see something happen and you're like, you ask the obvious question, what the hell were they thinking? And then the natural response is they weren't. I mean, at some point when someone laterals the ball to you, are you thinking, wait, are we losing? Do we need to keep this play alive? Yeah, I don't think Jacoby Myers knew that the score was tied. That's the only explanation. And I have that no makes idea what he thinks that Mac Jones was going to do. <laughs> I mean, think about how. So the whole weekend was theater of sports, whether it be at U.S. Bank Stadium, whether it be in the World Cup, which was unbelievable. The drama. I can I continue to say the theater of sports, and there was also the little bit of the World Cup as it went to PKs that. We were five minutes away from a mega meltdown because Fox was five minutes away from switching (laughs) all of the country because of contractual obligations to the NFL game. And you could have had, you know, if you would have had more stoppage time, you, you could have drifted into that. We are five minutes away from Armageddon when it comes to the football fans, whether you're, you're watching the football in the world cup or you want to watch your uh, Sunday football, but it was. I wanted it, to see it because uh, I like chaos. Yeah. You know, you, so you have the you have the Jones on Jones crime. I don't think Mac Jones could come back from a meme. Does, <laughs> does anybody rally? <laughs> if you are a meme, do you rally from being a meme, like an international meme? Because he's everywhere with the Sue like to Cody Hawkins stiff arm to yeah. throw you to the ground, yeah. like Chandler Jones did to Mac Jones. I don't know that you come back from that. I just I think there's sometimes where you just walk off and you retire. And you're like, you know what? My last memory will be I'm a meme because it's tough to come back from a meme like that. But but that play. So ironically, and again, what a great weekend of sports. Great weekend of sports. Is it's the 50th anniversary of the Immaculate Reception. So the Raiders and the Steelers play Christmas Eve. Mm-hmm. And everybody has been talking about that play. So you remember some of the greatest plays, how they finished. That, of course, is probably number one across the board. What happened yesterday in Vegas, which the Raiders were melting down again, and I thought, eh, the touchdown to tie it was not a touchdown. We need more sideline angles. We also probably need to have a discussion about the behemoth that is the NFL and the officiating because the great weekend of football ended last night with a clear defensive pass interference in the end zone that allowed the Giants to escape the uh, commies. Colts-Vikings was brutal. It, it, the, it's horrible. It's probably something that has been going on in the NFL that the NFL needs to address mm-hmm. with all of the resources they have. But back back to the Myers play. So I don't think he knew what the score was. And it's not a bad play when you get the first lateral to you. And if you have a lane, yeah. that's, that's great. But if you don't have a lane in a tie game, go down. Mm-hmm. But he had an absolute brain fart. And I, I just... 
I don't know what he's thinking Mac Jones is going to be able to do. I just don't, <laughs> I don't know at that moment. And he probably, as he threw it, he probably went, oh, no. And Chandler Jones mm -hmm. picks it off, shoves Mac Jones to the ground, goes into the end zone. And I sit there at 6 o'clock last night going, what an incredible weekend of sports. Just, I, 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 there, what did we do to deserve this? Because we just encountered the best sports weekend of 2022. Ooh, that's a big that one. That is a bold one. I don't, as, as, I don't disagree we, with you. As we oh, wrap up oh, 2022. I don't, oh, I, don't think, I don't think there's any, uh, with, with all the different sports from the World Cup to football. It's fair. Uh, hard to disagree. I mean, the, the, the NFL was, the NFL, come on, man. Who are we, who we kidding what the NFL is giving us? I mean, the NFL just always delivers. Always delivers. Deliver. We've had some great weekends this season, but yeah, this took the cake. It was just nonstop sports. It was a great weekend. Great weekend. And we got lots to discuss on a uh, a Monday. I mean, Nebraska football was busy this weekend. It was just, I mean, you could follow like the time of your sports watching over the weekend, whether it be from Friday to Saturday and things that unfolded. I'm watching KU Punk IU mm. uh, and KU KU might be okay. We were, ta we were talking champion. about that before. Said uh, Death Texas and Bill Self. You got, yeah. you got Grady Dick and you got uh, Dewan Harris. It might be the best passing point guard in all the college basketball. Starting to come together, Pepper. But as that is unfolding, and I'm looking at the line, by the way, five and a half, and they just rolled. Thank you. It is, <laughs> it's about noon, and all of a sudden Dylan Riola decommits from Ohio State, mm -hmm. and it just went boom. And Matt Rule is the on. Gif. Matt Rule is on uh, Twitter entertaining the masses, and people are eating that up. And then it led to a, a couple of uh, commitments of mm -hmm. uh, intrigue, and it could uh, lead to a commitment today and, of course, on Wednesday early signing period. Again, I, I will fight anyone today that wants to challenge me that this was not the best sports weekend of 22. You better come with some evidence because I got mine right there over Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. So what a, what a great way. I mean, this is like a, this is like a sports talk host like buffet. Oh yeah, it makes this job well, easy. Since where do yeah. you start though? Oh, we. I mean, where do you start? Could we have gotten? I mean, am I being greedy by asking for a five setter on Saturday? That was a little too dominant by Texas. Yeah, Texas volleyball was. You know, they, they, they were the best. So. They were the best, and they swept uh, Louisville. How many shirts did you sell? Uh, not many, Damn but it. a lot of Danny uh, Busman Kelly people. So I was in. I was downtown on Saturday morning. Uh, gosh, I, and, and all I could think of is. And there were a lot of people out, a lot of people, like a lot of, I, a lot of coaches, I imagine. And then uh, quite a few Texas people. There were a lot of Texas people here and Louisville people or Nebraska fans dressed as Louisville. I saw people. a lot of Husker apparel. I was thinking of the, the times that Nebraska has played in the final four here, what mm -hmm. it's like, what it would have been like. But Texas was the best in college volleyball and they bought their team and they won a national championship. Just Jesus, slip it right Saban. in there. Wow, Saban. Come on now. <laughs> Doesn't always mean it's going to win a national title. No, it doesn't. But Jimbo there Fisher. will be other people that will uh, try it in that sport as you buy yeah. your team because they essentially bought their team. No, it's which is fine. I mean, they won a national championship. That's the end goal. But you can I do hope, that. Now. I, I hope that does not become the thing in that sport that they saw Texas was able to do it. So we're just going to buy our team. I hope that's not the case. But they bought their team and they won a national championship, and uh, good for them and good for Omaha because they supported an event that did not have a hometown team. And Omaha should every four years be in the mix to host volleyball. Oh, yeah. yeah. Sold out. I mean, oh, it's, it's a great city. Knowledgeable, passionate. They put on a great show in and out of the arena. Yeah, every four years it should be in the uh, rotation. What was the average attendance, I think, even on Thursday? It was like 16,000, which is great. With a non-Nebraska presence. Some rooting interest, but non-direct Nebraska presence. Like, that's that's very impressive. I don't know who else pulls that off. That's that's pretty damn impressive. All right, so this is this is why this weekend was so great because we are entering a stretch as we come to you on a uh, Monday of mornings with Sharp and Hanley on the Zone. Is we begin today like a two week stretch where nothing gets done. Now you're just trying to ride through the holidays. Mm -hmm. Like the entire radio station is off next week mm -hmm. between Christmas and until the third of January. The Zone is off. Like it's national programming or it is the best of. It's essentially a year of crossovers. Happy New Year, just in case. Yeah. But what we did, but this is the stretch because there's school people are already out for school. Yeah. Um, you know, a lot of people, you're probably showing up at your workplace today 
and you're looking around, you like the Will Smith meme, or is that a gif? <laughs> uh, that's a gif. That's a gif. Okay. That's a gif. Uh, my, GIF. My apologize. My pop apologies to people that get memes and gifs or gifs all mixed up. But you probably might be showing up at work today and need to get the memo that yeah, we're off for two weeks. Now there's a lot of major cities where they'll give people two weeks off between now and the start of the new year. God bless. So that, so thank you, thank you, sports, thank you, Messi, thank you, Myers, thank you, Riola. Thank you, Jeff Sims. Am I leaving anybody else out? Thank, thank you, you, Jeff, Jeff Saturday. Thank you, Jeff Saturday. Jeff Saturday yeah. On any given Saturday. <laughs> so thank you for the gift to Sports Talk Radio <laughs> at this time of the year. It's it, it's hard to, you know, I don't know many people who were, if you weren't at the bar yesterday too, seeing the out-of-market Bears-Eagles. And yes, I'll, I'll, for a moment. This is the Bears process thing that I've liked too. And to your point though, even in a a losing effort, the excitement that I still get out of Justin Fields, who is nowhere near a completed product, but just does things. You're like, oh my God. Like when you think of defense, and Philadelphia's got a hell of a defense. When you think that it's just not their day, and he got sacked, I think like seven or eight times in the first half, but still does things that only Justin Fields can do. So the entertainment value there is watching that game on top of everything else that we saw from Saturday in the NFL too. It was it was amazing. I mean, <laughs> that comeback on Saturday, the way that New England and Vegas ended, and everything sort of in between. Yeah, it was it was high theater. It it was it was high theater all across the board, which was great because we get that to kind of go into your right, that final full week where we're all needing something to kind of embrace while we gotta get to the holidays where instead of just mailing it and counting down till Friday, oh, there's stuff. There's, there's stuff to get into. Uh, happy Hanukkah, everybody. Uh, if you are uh, celebrating uh, Hanukkah, it began uh, last night. Steve reminds me, uh, Boston Bruins Steve, because uh, he tweeted at me yesterday, while football was going on, the XL Collegiate Challenge was going on on ESPNU. And I thought he was kidding. And I turned over to ESPNU, and they were actually having an XL sheet competition. What? Yeah. Damn, we may missed, have we have may one. have the, reached the end of the world if we have a collegiate XL sheet challenge. <laughs> yeah, yeah I, I I missed that one. Uh, the only XL sheet that I am using currently is charts for basketball. So <laughs> I would not be participating in uh, that. All right, welcome in everybody. It is a heck of a Monday. We got lots to discuss uh, because Nebraska football made some noise, as Nick was alluding to. Uh, Creighton basketball suffered the sixth straight loss. I thought they would bounce back. Boy, was I wrong on Friday night because uh, they got punked. Actually, Nebraska and Creighton both got punked yep. this weekend. Uh, Nebraska lost on Saturday night to Kansas State. Um, but there's also, we had bowls this weekend. Uh, some bowls you care about, some you don't. Even the players, some they care about, some they don't. Bad look, Florida. Just saying, bad mm. uh, look. With that said, Bill Bender. From the sporting news, who might be one of the happiest guys that we ever have. He's going to join us. Well, I'd stop by Jacob Bigelow, who took in because Jacob, who is a former manager at Nebraska, he was there when Kenya Hunter was an assistant. Now, Kenya is on Mike Woodson's staff at IU. So they hooked up Jacob. So he got to go to Allen Fieldhouse on Saturday to see IU and KU. That's right. He was asking me for recommendations on what to do before and after. Did you send him? Did you send him some good places to stop for a beverage? I mean, that's pretty much all I did. I was send like, send him to I the mean, wagon. If 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 you want uh, beer, I got you. If you're wanting stuff that's not beer, I mean, did you tell him to go to the wagon though? Oh, I did. Well, yeah. you had to get to the wagon like five. Jacob doesn't strike four. me as a guy that would be hanging out at the wagon, but no, maybe he just wants to make an appearance. Yeah, get you a Wang burger, some tater tots, and Wang a beverage. Burger, yeah. The, Head up Free State, Lawrence Brewing That's who's going to ask. Free State is probably the place. Mm. When we went for UNO Kansas mm -hmm. a couple of Decembers ago. It was like four years ago. But that was first place we hit. It was it was busy, but it was, I mean, you could sit, good meal, good beer. Yeah, that's that, that'd be my recommendation. Uh, so Jacob then also went into the power and light and saw Nebraska and Kansas State play on Saturday night. Uh, that's a, a good day. I've been a big advocate, you know, Nebraska being out of the Big 12 if that's breaking news to you, that Nebraska and Creighton both should find a way to make their way into Kansas City for sporting events. Yep. Like, Creighton has played basketball at that arena 
Uh, Nebraska has been there a couple of times, Texas Tech and now Kansas State. They also, uh, well, that when they played Texas Tech, there were two games in that MTE. But I've always tried to be a promoter of Nebraska and Mizzou playing in football at Arrowhead and split the stadium. Yep. But I think it's important for, you know, you're two and a half, three hours away, depending on where you live uh, to get to Kansas City. I always think that it's it's important, you know, every two or three years for a Nebraska athletic program to drop into Kansas City. They still have a lot of a people game. down there. Yeah, they still have, they have a, I've, I've spoken to them. They have a huge uh, Husker club there yeah. in the Kansas City area. So Jacob, stop by at nine. Uh, Joel Lorenzi will be in at 930, trying to fix Creighton. Creighton comes home finally. They play three home games in 18 days. They take on Butler on Thursday on a six-game losing streak. Is it more than Ryan Kalkbrenner not being in the lineup? If you've watched the last couple of uh, games, so all of that to come as uh, we roll till 10, you're always welcome to join it and discuss the weekend in sports or your highs, your lows, your studs, your duds. Jeez, an incredible theater of sports this weekend. 951-1620. You can always email us into the Equitable Bank inbox, uh, Gary at 1620thezone.com, Hanley at 1620thezone.com, or on the JTEC Construction Zone Twitter feed where we'll entertain all of you 24 7 at Gary Sharp 1620 at Nick Hanley 1620. We are off and running. Bill Bender, Jacob Bigelow, Joel Lorenzi, all will join the show with you when we come back. We'll discuss what may have happened around noontime on Saturday that could change the future of Nebraska football. Maybe, maybe we're off and rolling on a Monday. Glad to have you in, everybody, on this 19th of December. It's mornings with Sharp and Hanley on 1620 The Zone. Mornings with Sharp and Hanley on 1620 The Zone and 1620thezone.com. Mornings on 1620 The Zone is brought to you by MD West One Orthopedics, Neurosurgery, and Spine. Previously on Unsportsmanlike Conduct. It's a different defense. It was originally designed for teams that had smaller defensive linemen and didn't have a lot of depth. Joe Lee Dunn was the one who invented it, and one of his staff members was Rocky Long. Long, of course, would become the head coach at New Mexico in San Diego State. One of his stops was was UCLA, where he recruited a linebacker by the name of Tony White. Unsportsmanlike conduct with John Bishop and Josh Peterson. Weekdays 2 to 6 on 1620 The Zone. Your Omaha area forecast from the Godfather's Pizza Weather Center and KETV News Watch 7 on 1620 The Zone. Cloudy and cool for your Monday. Temperatures today up near 30 degrees in Omaha, but still feeling like the low to mid 20s. A chance of snow arriving as we head throughout the morning and into this afternoon. Snow remains light with up to an inch possible in Omaha. Gusts today up to 20 miles an hour out of the southeast, shifting out of the northwest as we head on into tonight. Gradual clearing for Monday night, an overnight low near 2, but feeling like 10 below zero. A meteorologist, Caitlin Harvey with KETV Newswatch 7. 1620 The Zone Traffic From the burden, AC, heating, plumbing and more, time-saving traffic center. We have no accidents to report at this time, but you can expect a little bit of slowdown from 175th to 168th along center. Then on L, be prepared for just a little bit of slowdown near 90th Street. And other than that, it looks like your commute this morning should be pretty smooth, even if you're running a bit late. As always, remember to stay safe and wear your seatbelts. I'm Chris Scott. Want to know what CBDs and Kratom can do for you? Then stop by any 42 Degrees location. Talk to our knowledgeable and friendly staff and see why we are the source for all your Kratom and CBD needs. 42 Degrees, by your mom's house. Thank you to everyone who voted for MD West One in the Best of Omaha contest. We are thrilled to announce MD West One has been named the number one private medical practice in Omaha for four years in a row. MD West One is also named first place in the orthopedic surgery and neurosurgical spine surgery. Our 34 board certified surgeons specialize in treating every bone, joint, or muscle condition from head to toe. Go to mdwest1.com to meet the number one place to go for orthopedic, neurosurgery, and spine. Come visit Omaha's little corner of France for mouth-watering appetizers and entrees, plus melt-in-your-mouth desserts. Pick up your holiday gift cards today or reserve their party room for your holiday gatherings. Les Voltaire will make you feel right at home, just like they've been doing for more than two decades. Les Voltaire, just off 156th and West Dodge Road in the Pepperwood Village and at LesVoltaireOmaha.com. Make New Year's reservations now for their 5.30 or 8.30 seatings. More info at LeVoltaireOmaha.com. I wanted to know why some people who get COVID-19 get it so bad. I found out it may be because they have a high risk factor. 
such as heart disease, diabetes, being overweight, smoking, and asthma. Even if symptoms feel mild, these factors can increase your risk of COVID-19 turning severe. So if you're at high risk and test positive, there are things you can do, like asking your healthcare provider if an authorized oral treatment is right for you. Learn about an option at treatcovid19.com. This message is sponsored by Pfizer. Kevin Arwin from Monday Night Football on Westwood One. Join me and Ross Tucker when the Green Bay Packers take on the Los Angeles Rams at Lambeau. Last week, Baker Mayfield took the reins as a replacement for the injured Matthew Stafford and led the Rams to an impressive and dramatic win over the Raiders. Now they face Aaron Rodgers and the rested Packers at Lambeau on Monday Night Football. Right here on 1620, The Zone. Football season is underway, so now is the perfect time to download FanDuel, America's number one sportsbook. Because right now, new customers get a no-sweat first bet up to $1,000. That's free bets back. If your first bet doesn't win, just sign up with the promo code WIN. FanDuel has all your favorite bets from the money line to point spread to player props. So sign up today with promo code WIN for your no-sweat first bet. Make every moment more this season with FanDuel, an official sportsbook partner of the NFL. Must be present in state where lawful to wager. 21 plus in select states. First online real money wager. Only refund issued is on withdrawable free bets that expire in 14 days. Restrictions apply. See terms at sportsbook.fanduel.com. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. Visit fanduel.com slash RG. Colorado, Iowa, Michigan, New Jersey, Pennsylvania, Illinois, Virginia. 1-800-NEXT-STEP or text next step to 53342. Arizona, 1-800-789-7777 or visit ccpg.org slash chat. Connecticut, 1-800-9-WITH-IT. Indiana, Kansas, 1-800-522-4700 or visit ksgamblinghelp.com. Louisiana, 1-877-770-SCOT. New York, 1-877-8-HOPE-NY or text HOPE-NY 467-369. Tennessee, Tennessee Redline, 1-800-889-9789. Wyoming, West Virginia, 1-800-522-4700 or visit 1-800-GAMBLER.net. Duck Defense Midwest makes your home healthier and improves the life of your HVAC system. So improve the health of your home and everyone in it. Go to cleanairradio.com for a special duck cleaning offer for zone listeners. That's cleanairradio.com. And we're back. Mornings with Sharp and Hammond. Here's Gary, Nick, and Jimmy on 1620 The Zone. theater of sports that took over our lives over the weekend or at least uh, yours uh, truly where we had i don't believe that just happened finishes i mean the Matt Gittle reception stands alone because I, I think that was a playoff game ironically mm-hmm. 50 years you got the fail mary the the replacement refs when you had the packers and the seahawks one official said incomplete the other said touchdown uh yesterday immediately brought up joe pekarczyk in the Meadowlands, when uh, Herm Edwards picked up the fumble, you have yesterday the Jones on Jones crime, the Chandler Jones intercepting a lateral and walking it off. Uh, you also probably have the Music City Miracle. Mm-hmm. Just did things that are out of my head in the NFL. I mean, in Nebraska, we had two of those in the span of three years. You had the Kellogg to Westerkamp play against Northwestern, and then Mike Riley's first game where BYU scored yeah. on a Hail Mary at the uh, end of the game. It, it's it's an unbelievable day of uh, football yesterday. I mean, the NFL, the NFL never loses. Too big to fail, unless it's officials on the final play of the Giants Commies game last night. Which maybe Jr. wants to go there as he joins us to kick off uh, the week. Good morning, Jr. Happy Monday, guys. Hello, Thanks how are you? Call. Good. First housekeeping, Mr. Hanley. Thanks uh, for joining our morning show. Uh, I, You're welcome. They said. When they said Gary and friends, uh, I mean, I love Robbie, but he only Gary only had one friend, so uh, I was getting a little nervous. I like I like Robbie, but uh, I like him in moderation, like my wife. So, uh, Whoa! First of all, did not see that. Uh, uh, I am not a ref. I've never mm-hmm. been a ref. I don't want to be a ref, and it's probably why we have a shortage of referees. But uh, it always seems to be, and it's been an underlying theme. Listen to you guys, you know. For, for a while is the refs are horrible and they're miserable and they, they just they all they do is make mistakes. And I'm like, are you watching the games? You saw the end of the Raiders game. Uh, okay. How stupid were they? Uh, I think Tampa had four turnovers in like eight minutes uh, in their game. Um it's, it just seems like the refs are always wrong and the players and the coaches, the 33 point lead. I mean, uh, I don't think the refs screwed that one up, but they were bad on uh, both. They were bad on both in that one. Yeah. 
so uh, let, let's let's treat. I guess yeah, this is. Don't let Higgins listen to this because his head's <laughs> going to get bigger than it already is. <laughs> but um, you know, refs make mistakes, <laughs> and they will, and so will everybody else. And I sit in Memorial Stadium, <laughs> and I have to watch them go to the TV and and check some play that means nothing. I mean, if there's been one percent, maybe two percent games that were the wrong way that uh, of a win and a loss because of an official, it's it's such a waste of time. Let's play the game, throw replay out, and uh, and just move on with our lives. Hey, and G- I'll, uh, I'll, I'll hang up, and I'll <laughs> let you guys bash this call and reverse it. Oh, no, no. JR, thank you for the uh, phone call. So the, the defensive pass interference was pretty clear. Uh, former Husker, for just brief, Darnay Holmes, pass interference in the end zone to end the game last night. But the McLaren call, which a lot of people are upset with, him not being on the line of scrimmage, mm-hmm. that was the correct call. Yeah. So they got that right. But there was also the – JR is a little bit – you know, we, we, now that we've, we're fully invested in replay, is the, that final drive last night where they kept going to the monitor to see if guys were in bounce or not. And I don't know, they were, there was one call where they made the right call, but they had to go to the monitor to see if um, – Heineke was in bounce at the end when he was going towards uh, the end zone. I, the the NFL in in that situation where the NFL is such a behemoth and there is so much money involved and gambling is a huge aspect of the NFL. That's an area that they have to continue to get better in is uh, officiating. And I think they have become more cognizant of guys that are not very good that they try and push towards uh, not being part of their organization. I would, I would suggest a guy like Carl Cheffers, who I had to watch yesterday in the uh, Chiefs-Texans uh, game. I've always felt this, and you may agree, you may disagree. This is like a couple of years ago I had this, this take. It's probably not that hot of a take. But as more technology becomes available, as you do have more of an opportunity to go under the hood or to go in front of the screen and to get it right with more reviewable calls – to me, that becomes a crutch. So the in-game, you know, initial call or the way that you go ahead and officiate the game, I do feel like there is a little bit of a fallback. And I think any of us, that if we had the ability to, if we initially got it wrong but could go right back and get it right with the benefit of review, sometimes I think it just naturally probably doesn't make you as sharp. I, that's probably how I would be. I, I try to put myself in their shoes when I'm critical of officials, whether we're talking to, uh, mainly I, I, I get in this conversation with football and baseball, basketball lately, especially in college. But that's how I've always felt with you, with having more of the technology and the capabilities and the amount of reviewable calls now. Remember when that thing started, there was only a few. You could probably have name on one hand how many calls were actually under the category of reviewable. Now there's so much more in every sport. It increases, and yes, it it makes the game kind of clunky. I like the fact that you have the ability to get it right, but when it comes down to the, the real time making that initial first call, I do think sometimes, dare I say, it's made officiating as a whole maybe a little lazier, maybe a little bit more complacent because you know you can eventually get it right. That's just always been my theory. I might be way off on that. I think there's some, you know, the problem is when we talk about poor officiating in any sport, it takes away from the men and women who are really, really good. No doubt. Because then everybody gets lumped together. I think the majority of them are good. And officials are are right more than they're wrong. Mm -hmm. Um, But when you, when there's some egregious stuff that is overlooked, then that has to be brought to the forefront. But I agree. When you have replay, there are some officials, and I know this in basketball because I've I spent a lot more time around basketball officials and, you know, away from the floor. Um, and, you know, I've asked them. And there are officials, especially younger ones, that they'll make a call. Maybe they're not super confident, but they always have the replay to go to, either to validate them or to correct their call. Mm-hmm. You know, things are happening in real time, and then you can slow it down. But in the NFL, this is, this is an ongoing problem where you have some crucial calls that are not made that affect outcomes of games. And it's a mega, mega billion dollar business yep. that the NFL has to, you know, they are, they, you know, they're going to get hit again in the off season of let's make these guys full time. And we'll go through that whole mm-hmm. rigmarole again. All right. Welcome back in mornings with 
sharp and handling. So part of while all the sports world was going on and you had the World Cup and you had the NFL for two days, again, never did I think we'd walk in here. First thing we would not be talking about is a 33-point comeback, but that just shows you what kind of a wacky weekend it was. But Nebraska football had a their second big weekend of recruiting, and they're doing it their way. Okay, so they're filling a class. They're probably going to get an offensive lineman from South Dakota who I'm very intrigued by, who seems to be a guy that has an edge, was a North Dakota pledge, and you're like, whoa. But go and watch. I'm not even going to attempt How do you to say his last, his name? last uh, name. Yeah, I want to know that. Jason from Pierre at 6'4", 320. I'm going to say he, Machizek. He, that's pretty good. Uh, I don't know. That's just. Well, you're, you're used to announcing all the pronunci- hockey names. Pronunciation guides, yeah. You said Machizek? Machizek. Jason yeah. Machizek. That's what I'm just going to say. So Jason. he looks to be an old school offensive lineman. But his, he had pledged to North Dakota. So he's got announced today where he's going to go to school. And we, we are entering a two-and-a-half-week period of a dead period. So transfers can't visit. You know, now we're waiting for Monday or Wednesday, excuse me, the early signing period. So Nebraska has gone, gone about the last couple of weeks, and they're very aggressive. They're very confident. They're very organized when it comes to recruiting. And they have done a good job of putting in the heads of recruits that, that had not committed to Nebraska, but were thinking about Nebraska but maybe leaning somewhere else, maybe Nebraska is back in the mix, like a Mason Golden, uh, Benny Nagoy at Lincoln High, two mm-hmm. in-state guys. And there's already six in-state players in this class, which is the most since 2002. But this class, which will not get you into the top 30, more than likely, they're filling it their way. They're like doing it their way, what you have to do for your first two weeks when you take over and you have no real n- knowledge of your current roster. You're just trying to go get guys that fit your blueprint. So they've been. Really, really aggressive, which I keep to say that. They are aggressive. They are confident. They're able to sell their blueprint. Even if you don't have a position coach, they convince quarterbacks and wide receivers that this is the place uh, for them. But as what has happened the last two weeks and what may happen the rest of this week, because there are some, I mean, Len Hart is out there. I love the tight end from Aurora, Colorado. Uh, Metzger, who is a decommit from Colorado. As I mentioned, Mason Goldman. They could get Prince. Um, you know, defensive lineman to commit. Did Has Nebraska gotten better? I know you don't know any of these guys haven't played a down of football. They got mm-hmm. the guy that I wanted this weekend and call you the transfer from Florida. Did Nebraska football get better? And then I'll throw the caveat in there, Nick, that they are now back and they have a shot again at Dylan Riola, yeah. who shocked, and I, I mean shocked everyone by decommitting from Ohio State. But Nebraska has a shot again and has a legitimate, real shot. Did Nebraska football in the last two weeks get better? It's hard to say based on the needs, they didn't. Like, so I'm inclined to say yes. Now, how do you feel about Hayden Moore? You know, that there's it, that's and that's what we it's not a Nebraska thing. You're going to see that, especially as we get closer to Wednesday. You get maybe the two or three steps forward, maybe one step back with a decommit. But the fact that you are in the mix for that, the Jeff Sims decision over the weekend, too, with a two-year gap, regardless of what Casey decides to do, you can kind of see a path there where, oh, all right, say Jeff Sims comes in. Maybe he ends up being your guy. And you think of the timeline that that would fit for a guy like Dylan Raiola. It's like, okay, he doesn't have to come in his true freshman year and be the dude right from the, from the jump. But as far as just the overall recruiting profile, and I would say the reputation in a very short time, because we've seen this, unfortunately, too often with the coaching change, when the change is made, and what that coaching staff has to do in the little time that they have ever since the early signing period was instated. When was it? What, gosh, how long has it been now since we've had the December early signing period? Is it like, has it been five years already? Uh, maybe coming up on five I think years. we are. It's such a, a small window. And that's the only benefit of not playing in a bowl game is you can put all of your focus in on that. But what you're hearing from either guys that are still waiting to decide or ones who have already made that decision is this staff, how they're kind of separating themselves from others with the lack of success that Nebraska football's had over the, you know, really last five, six years, or if you want to, you know, round up to a decade. That sounds like Matt Rule and his staff, they know exactly what they're looking for. They're identifying it. And yet they're making those relationships and they're doing it. You know, I'm hearing the word a lot creative. They're, they're being very creative. And so when you look at what Matt rules, better teams have been based on in speed, 
They're identifying that. They're getting that. But also, they are sort of leaving that impression that I think for guys that are deciding the team's in programs that have had better records seem like they have a little bit more quicker path to say a conference title than what Nebraska has. Nebraska is really hanging on there. They're a big part of the mix. You're be, you're still being heavily considered uh, against teams that you probably shouldn't be considered against or amongst. And so, yeah, to me, that is a win as far as are they getting better? That's where I'm always, it's hard for me to say, yeah, they are. But that's this is where you kind of look at the NFL. I always hate when people say, oh, that that draft class was an F. Well, it's an F if you didn't address immediate needs. Mm -hmm. I think Nebraska is addressing areas that they have to at least start at, especially when we talk about whether it's Machizik, Machizik, whatever, however the hell you say his name. You know, you look at offensive line. You know, you're looking at areas of needs, and this is where it does come down. Okay, how do they develop? We'll find out in time. But are you at least addressing those areas? And it seems like they are. So, yeah, to – in Except a very for offensive long, defensive line. Yep. And that may happen over the next couple of That's days. That's what you but, have to hope. But yeah. the first two weeks, offensive line, defensive line, it would have been nice to have one or two. I mean, it still could happen over, over the next uh, three or four days. But that's an area of major need in this program. It's nice that they added the quarterback room. And, and Hornsby is probably going to be in if you, you read into his trainer, quarterback, coach, whatever, mm -hmm. that he will be here. So Nebraska will have two portal guys at that position. Um, in this class, or actually in the 23 roster, um, they're they're active in, and they. I guess the opposite is if they didn't, if they got worse, which I think I would agree. No, they didn't get worse. They had to have gotten better. The the question I'm probably more interested is how much better do you think they got? Well, that's the, the remains to be seen. Um, I, I think there's certain areas in terms of an upgrade in speed, but they have guys that aren't coming in and are going to be day one starters. There's maybe only probably going to be three or four of those guys that are in competition out of this class. Um, but they, they did exactly. So here's what Matt Rule has done. Matt Rule talked to you on a Monday three weeks ago. Is that right? Was it three weeks ago? Yeah. Was his opening yeah. press conference? So, yeah. so things have happened pretty quick. Mm -hmm. I mean, they have a lot in three weeks. When you hire a new coach and you're in, you know, you're right in the middle of recruiting season, you're supposed to create excitement. Have they done that? Yes. Okay, so there's check number one. Mm -hmm. Now, then you go to, is Nebraska better? Is the 23 roster better now than it was three weeks ago? Yeah, I, I think so. Now, that's where you look at, okay, do you count losing to Trey Palmer? I mean, he was, well, he's, that's, I mean, he's not I'm going asking, to another. I'm asking the question. You answer the question, and that's, that's a valid one. You lose mm -hmm. a key wide receiver. Yeah. And do you have anybody that is replacing him out of the portal that brings his his numbers? Right. I mean, you, you added you added a speedster in, in Jalen Lloyd, who may or may not play wide receiver. Mm -hmm. You could flip Nagoy from Iowa State to Nebraska, and he may not play wide receiver. I, I'd be really surprised if he played wide yeah. receiver, more of a defensive back. Um, but that's so. Did they create excitement? Yes. Is there now intrigue with all of a sudden Dylan Riola is back in play? And Matt Rule could be the Andy Enfield of college football. You know what I mean here? I like the poll. You're going with what? Wait, no, make, please explain this one to me. The Andy Enfield. So you know who he hired yeah. on his staff. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Okay. Now I know. Okay. Now I know where you're going. Um, so he hired Eric Mobley, who just happened to uh, father a couple of really right. good basketball players. Where did they go to school? Okay, maybe Rule wants to be the Andy Enfield of uh, college football. So excitement, intrigue, did they get better? Also lost this weekend, and in, in everything that was going on, they offered an eighth grader. Yes. Nice. They offered an eighth grade quarterback. That, is, that, that really flew under the radar. That all of a sudden Nebraska just slipped an offer yeah. to an eighth grader who led his high school team to a state championship in Alabama. Mm -hmm. Hello. Hello. Locking the halls, eighth grade, and you have an offer to play football at Nebraska. Is the F facial here yet? That's the one thing I want to know. Oh, don't eighth graders are growing now. I got I, that, I that wispy, <laughs> funny looking mustache. We've just, all been there. I'm just worried. Do that... you let it grow or do you shave it? No, you. And then grow. you think you're cool because you have facial hair as an eighth grader. Yeah. Look at this. Hell yeah. I mean, I I need to look more closely at the kid. I would be fully hussed if the kid had like a full beard in eighth grade. Yeah, like that, check his birth certificate. There's a reason why Nebraska jumped on this kid early. But that that always makes me nervous. 
if you like if you peak at like say 16 most don't but that always makes me what was your peak age there nick Ooh, still waiting to do that you haven't (laughs) peaked yet no 43 i'm still waiting to peak maybe it's probably not in the cards i just don't think i'll ever peak like i I would say like physically like physically you know probably like 18 okay yeah is when I actually started to be able to put on like I don't weight. believe that I physically peaked yet. I think I still have a chance. Do you? Yeah. All right. I just got to get myself in shape first. <laughs> My peak year <laughs> might have been when I turned 21. I always just, I, the way I always attribute that is when you can actually put like muscle on as opposed to, you know, no matter what you do. Because I, oh. I was active in high school sports. We had a very you know, consistent uh, workout routine, but I couldn't, I couldn't put on any muscle. I was just a string bean. I would eat like a foot long, then a six inch sub at Subway. And oh, I would somehow lose weight. Living the life. Yeah. I'd somehow lose weight. Well, isn't that the thing? Isn't that what got Jared in trouble? <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I don't think that's what got Jared in trouble. He was dining on a lot of subs. <laughs> well, amongst other issues in Jared's life. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. It's a little early on a Monday morning to go back there. Well, I'm sure many have. <laughs> yeah, my mind. All right, 47 <laughs> past the hour. Wow. Uh, wow. How did that go? <laughs> You'll learn six o'clock hour, anything goes. Nick, it's six, the best. Hey, 1620 means more, Nick. You're going to get used to it pretty quick. All right, 648. Uh, you brought up Hayden Moore's decommitment. Uh, our friends across the river, they are at DEFCON 5. Hmm. Because this is decommitment time. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of guys flipping. Michigan not only got Hayden Moore to decommit, which you could see coming, the linebacker from Colorado. Michigan had a monster weekend. It started with Ernest Hausman. They had a monster weekend. Alabama is going to have a nice little addition, and Iowa's going to melt down. We'll tell you about that when we come back. It's Mornings with Sharp and Hanley on 1620 The Zone. More with Gary and Nick after this on 1620 The Zone. Kevin Arlen from Monday Night Football on Westwood One. Join me and Ross Tucker when the Green Bay Packers take on the Los Angeles Rams at Lambeau. Last week, Baker Mayfield took the reins as a replacement for the injured Matthew Stafford and led the Rams to an impressive and dramatic win over the Raiders. Now they face Aaron Rodgers and the rested Packers at Lambeau on Monday Night Football. If it's the NFL, it's on 1620 The Zone. Hey everyone, Josh Peterson here from my friends at Coogler Vision. If you have money sitting in your flex plan or in your health savings account, it is time for an early holiday gift for yourself. I am talking about LASIK with my friends at Coogler Vision. Visit their website today, cooglervision.com. Let them know that you are sick of bad vision and you are ready to see if you qualify to have one of their seven vision correction procedures. 402-558-2211 or online at cooglervision.com. Shop Woodhouse Buick GMC first for your next SUV and experience the difference. We offer a full lineup of SUVs so you can find the one that best suits you and your lifestyle. The GMC Terrain and Acadia offer the perfect blend of tech and safety on the road. Or discover the style, comfort, and cargo space of the Buick Enclave. Plus, we make it easy to shop, finance, and purchase in-store or online at WoodhouseBuickGMC.com. We are professional grade. This week, Zone has five great deals half off. That's right. Each day this week, we'll have a new deal half off that is perfect for those last-minute gift ideas. You'll find deals from Early Bird, Le Voltaire, Ted and Wally's Ultra Premium Ice Cream, Shug's Comfort Food, and Palm Beach Tan, all for half off. Make sure to log on at 9 a.m. each day to see what deal we have available because these half-off deals will go fast. Head to 1620thezone.com and click Deals Now. I wanted to know why some people who get COVID-19 get it so bad. I found out it may be because they have a high risk factor, such as heart disease, diabetes, being overweight, smoking, and asthma. Even if symptoms feel mild, these factors can increase your risk of COVID-19 turning severe. So if you're at high risk and test positive, there are things you can do, like asking your healthcare provider if an authorized oral treatment is right for you. Learn about an option at treatcovid19.com. 
This message is sponsored by Pfizer. My friend and I are taking a trip to Mexico this year, but neither of us speak Spanish. So we downloaded Babbel and started learning Spanish fast. Want to start getting conversational in another language in as little as three weeks? Babbel's quick 10-minute lessons were designed by language experts to be the most efficient and effective way to learn a new language. ¿Cómo te llamas? ¿Cómo te llamas? Babbel, language for life. Celebrating 10 million subscriptions sold. Now try Babbel for free at Babbel.com. That's B-A-B-B-E-L.com. Prescription products require an online consultation with a healthcare provider who will determine if a prescription is appropriate. Restriction supply. See website for full details and important safety information. This message is for the guy who isn't perfect in the bedroom. And let's be honest, who is? Maybe the issue is getting it up or keeping it up. Or maybe it's finishing too soon. If any of these performance hiccups sound familiar to you, don't sweat it. Hymns can help. At 4 you can go online and get clinically proven prescription medication that treats these issues prescribed for you, if appropriate, by licensed medical providers. And the medication is shipped free to your door in discreet packaging. Plus, Hims gives you unlimited follow-up visits with medical providers. No one's perfect in the bedroom every time. But with Hims, you can get a lot closer than before. And chances are, your partner will agree. To get started today, go to forhims.com slash perfect. That's forhims.com slash perfect for your free visit. F O R H I M S dot com slash P E R F E C T. Imagine it's cold and frigid and your home's heater just quit. Sometimes the heating system is beyond repair and needs to be replaced. At One Hour Heating and Air Conditioning, our comfort specialists take the frustration out of the equation. We're experienced in everything from boilers to furnaces to heat pumps, duct work and all. So call 402-333-5000 for a free duct cleaning with every furnace installation. Always on time, or you don't pay time. Terms and conditions apply. Independently owned and operated, licensed in their respective state or county. Now back to mornings with Sharp and Hammond on 1620 The Zone. So the Jones on Jones crime to end the Raiders Patriots game. Kenny Elbert had the great line. The Stanford band is nowhere in sight. <laughs> The Raider call is really good. You have to listen to the Patriot call. Scott Zolak, Meltdown yep. on Patriot Radio. Uh, I think we have a contender for the Bill Callahan line as the dumbest team in America. Zolak gets a little emotional. I've I've labeled, I, this maybe isn't fair. I don't know if you have any uh, relationship with him. Kind of a meathead. Oh, I just heard him. I know he's got a, what, a midday talk show in Boston. Yeah. Just in his calls, in his color commentary, just in his calls, he's a lot of that. Not just in this game. It happens a lot. At least uh, Meyer stood in front of his locker and answered the questions yesterday. I, I think, honestly, he didn't know what the score was. He thought that He thought that the Patriots were trailing. Because if you're tied and you're thinking that way, when you get the first lateral and your lane closes up, you just go down. And you go to overtime. Yeah, if Steve, if Stevenson pitches you the ball. Does all of a sudden your mindset change? You're like, what? Why did you wait? Do I need to keep this play alive? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I think he thought they were losing. I do too. But the Patriots have had cases like that this year. They've had some bad football IQ. Uh, and that was I was not on Belichick yesterday. Now the uh, the football IQ you could put yeah. a little bit on his cap. That was on the player. Yeah, that was on the player making the decision in that moment who should have known better. Mm-hmm. But some people are always surprised that players, the time and score sometimes isn't at the front of their uh, cranium. Well, th- and, I, that, and that had to be the case. That's the only way to explain what he tried to do yesterday. 100%. I always think about those moments, as I said earlier, where it's like, what were you thinking? Okay, I wasn't. That's my response. I was thinking of the Weber timeout against North Carolina. It was always talked about, you know, was the coaches to blame? I remember Jalen Rose even saying, like, it was communicated. More than once, we don't have any timeouts left. But you get in that moment, and you just kind of lose your mind, especially in a high-leverage moment like that. And I get a national championship compared to that game, probably a little bit different. But something happens, like Weber being trapped. Or in this case, you get a pitch from your running back. 
and you're thinking all of a sudden your mind just changes. You can't pin that on the coaching staff because people could, if they want to be, you know, Belichick haters or Matt Patricia haters, they could say, well, did they communicate? How do you communicate that to them? You know, how are you supposed to communicate in that moment when this coaching staff had no idea that was going to happen either? So there are a lot of things you can put on Matt Patricia this year as the play caller and the OC or even Bill Belichick. That's not one of them. I'm sorry. That is all on the player. And I do. I feel for him because that moment happens. You probably know exactly what the situation is, but then all of a sudden you get the ball in what is typically a last-ditch effort, and you're thinking to yourself, wait a minute, did I have it all wrong? Are we down? We were talking the last segment. So of all of the, I would say, excitement and intrigue that Nebraska created this weekend in recruiting in the last two weeks, they offered an eighth grader. Uh, Chris in Baton Rouge says my eighth grader is six foot one eighty five. Nice. How much you bench? I don't know I believe that his kids are baseball players, if I remember uh, correctly. Nice. Uh, so that eighth grader has plenty of time to make his commitment and then decommit. I said on Friday we have to find a new word for the word commitment when it comes to recruiting, because Nebraska, not a surprise, Hayden Moore decommitted linebacker from Colorado. Recruited by the previous staff, uh, didn't come back to campus with the new staff. So you kind of felt the writing was on the wall. Texas A&M, Michigan, Michigan became very aggressive. Uh, I think he's a really good football player. I wanted to see him here, but it happens. You know, you look elsewhere and Michigan is having a haul. Michigan football is doing really well right now. And I'm sure the bat signal just went up for Michigan Lance. He's going to be calling here in about five minutes. Um. But with him decommitting, and this is where we're at. I mean, this is going to be crazy for the next 72 hours. Just be comfortable knowing that the meltdowns here with decommits will not be as large as the decommit in Iowa City. So Caden Proctor is an offensive lineman. We brought up on this show for about a year now. He is a Des Moines kid. Okay, he goes to Southeast Polk High School. Crazy. When I was in high school, we used to beat the crap out of Southeast Polk. Hmm. Senior year, 42 nothing. There nice. you go. Uh, but then as that part of Des Moines started to grow, they became very good in all athletics. And their football program is pretty good. I mean, they, they, they got a defensive back that's at Iowa who was uh, nearly a five-star uh, the previous year. So all of a sudden, in the state of Iowa, where they produce really good offensive linemen, you have a five-star, and he commits to Iowa. Well, as we get closer to signing day, which is Wednesday, get a little uh, get a little trick me fingers and uh, you start picking up the phone and maybe you start looking elsewhere and people start to get in your ear. And he dabbled with Oregon. He dabbled with Colorado, reaffirmed his commitment to Iowa. This is a five-star offensive lineman at a place where they produce NFL offensive linemen and need some help there because they were atrocious on the offensive line this past year. Well... On Wednesday, it's to be expected that he will sign with Alabama. Mm. So Alabama came in and got a – his last name escapes me, but I know he's from Cedar Falls. Uh, Alabama got an offensive lineman from Cedar Falls in the last 10 years, and now they're going to go get a five-star from Des Moines who was – I would say he had been in, he'd been in the mix at Iowa for a while. Uh, so that will be a, another strike against Kirk Ferentz when an in-state five-star does not stick with his commitment to you. But again, we have to find, and, and you know, it's the mindset of a 17 and 18 year old. And they're yeah. going through this because we all did this when we were trying to decide what school we're going to go to. And we weren't deciding, Oh, also we're going to play sports. The word commitment probably needs a new mm -hmm. phrase when it comes to saying yes to your school of choice before you actually sign on the dotted line. Right. Ross Piercebacher there you currently go. plays for the Lions. The Red Hot Lions, by the way. Yeah. One and six to six and one. I'm still looking for a good word to replace commitment on that. You mentioned uh, Kirk Ferentz, how that looks for him, too. Does, do you just shirk that down to the Brian, then? Well, oh, that's a Brian thing. Oh, no, no. It's, it's, not, the, it's the not, head of the program. It's not a Kirk thing. Yeah, but still. A, oh, they, Kirk still no, no. He, he walks on water. Um. Not as much. You don't have a lot of Iowa fans call your show. Well, here. I know <laughs> as far as the fans with Gary Bart, I'm sorry, with Gary Bart, still on a pedestal. But yeah, it's for Matt's offensive line too to see it be in the state that it was a year ago. Yeah, I mean that says something when 
you will it, – it's, it's, it's hard for me to say, like, when Alabama comes ca- calling, you don't pick up the phone or you don't really consider them. But when you think of the end game, the, the, uh, the pipeline of two Iowa's offensive line to the NFL, there's obvious solid history there, too. So that does say a lot. When in the 11th hour, yeah, you know what? No, not the place for me. Feel bad for Alabama. Their recruiting class, not very good. <laughs> Top five. Wow, they have they have picked up some ground in about three weeks. That's putting throwing dirt on Nick Saban. Yeah, I think they're going to be okay in Tuscaloosa with their recruiting class that may be number one before it's all said and done on Wednesday. I and they're yeah. and they're doing okay in the portal. If yeah. they can pick and choose which players they want. Yeah. The Saban thing, he's lost touch, or Alabama is now vote. No, I, they might I'm come sorry. out and play the Sugar Bowl angry the way everybody like everybody's gonna play. Hey. Nobody's in the portal and hey. Saban's you you can you can say what you want about Saban. And I think the tone has changed towards him in probably the last five or six years. You cannot deny that there is something they have that is special at Alabama when Will Anderson and Bryce Young say, No, we're gonna play in the right. bowl game. Yeah. It makes, the, it makes the Alabama-K-State State game a must-watch. Oh, yeah. Because yeah. Deuce Vaughn is going to play in it. Mm-hmm. But, but when Will Anderson and Bryce Young, who are going to be drafted within the first hour of the NFL draft, yep. they're saying, oh, yeah, we're going to play in the bowl game. Yeah, That yeah. says a lot about Alabama There's football. Angry Crimson Tide and Saban. I mean, this is Saban's probably say, saying thank you to everybody. It's like, man, just when I think, you know what, maybe I won't do this anymore. Nah, I feel 40 years old now. Fired up. It's just it's the burden of being such a good program and such a consistent program for so long that when you're not in the college football playoff, people are already talking about you're on your way out, which I'm sorry, is is it's ludicrous. It's ridiculous. And yeah, go ahead and piss off Nick Saban. Let's see what he does in the offseason and how he builds that roster. And oh yeah, how they develop. That's not bad either. Yeah. They're they're so far from being done. It's yeah. I, people need to slow down. This is fun for him. All right, Bill Bender will join us coming up at eight when we uh, come back in the next hour. So Nebraska is added to the quarterback room with Jeff Sims, the transfer from Georgia Tech. What does that mean for Casey Thompson? What does that mean for the quarterback room? And what will the offense look like with maybe a quarterback in the twenty-four class coming? Hmm. Who could that be? Who could that be? Who's out there? Hmm. Hmm. I, I, I am blown away that this flipped so quickly. I, I, I start to connect the dots and I go, okay, but that it happened as quickly as it did with Dylan Riola decommitting from Ohio State. So now everything is in play. We will uh, dive into that. Also, it was a good weekend for local products and not just guys that committed to Nebraska uh, that have committed to have an opportunity to play college football at the next level. Dive into all that. As we roll into hour number two, there's Nick, Jimmy, and Gary. Mornings with Sharp and Hanley on 1620 The Zone. Mornings with Sharp and Hanley on 1620 The Zone and 1620thezone.com with Gary Sharp and Nick Hanley. Live from the Host Coffee Studio, this is 1620 The Zone. Mornings with Sharp and Hanley, brought to you by MD West One Orthopedics, Neurosurgery, and Spine on 1620 The Zone. 1620 The Zone Traffic. From the Burden, AC, Heating, Plumbing, and More, Time Saving Traffic Center. We have one accident to report along the northbound JFK between Q Street and L Street, so please be cautious if you are in that area. On Industrial Road, it looks like things are slowing down just a little bit near 149th. And on Center, it looks like you can expect just a minor delay from 175th to 168th. As always, remember to stay safe and wear your seatbelts. I'm Chris Scott. This time-saving traffic is brought to you by Saul's Jewelry and Loan. What does Saul's loan on? Almost everything, like jewelry, gold chains, bracelets, earrings, wedding rings, and high-end watches, guns, electronics, $10 to $50,000, super fast and easy with no credit check. Saul's loan's on almost everything. Your vehicle is important. It gets you where you need to go, but it does much more than that. I'm Darcy with Dingman's Collision Center, and at Dingman's, we know your vehicle is an investment and that safety is your priority. To make sure your vehicle is as safe as it was prior to an accident, bring it to Dingman's for proper, safe, and certified repairs. We protect you and your investment. We've been voted Best of Omaha for the past 17 years. At Dingman's, we'd rather be the best than apologize for anything less. Find us at dingmans.com. 
Email any of our shows anytime into the Equitable Bank inbox. At Equitable, we take banking personally. For me, John at 1620thezone.com. The Equitable Bank inbox from 1620 The Zone. Buy your next vehicle your way from anywhere with Woodhouse. Start your journey online at woodhouse.com. Easily shop all new and pre-owned inventory. Explore payment options and apply for financing. Ready to purchase? Schedule your new vehicle for pickup from the dealership or have it delivered to your driveway. Need a little extra help in determining your perfect vehicle? Our knowledgeable and local dealerships can guide you to the vehicle that best matches your needs. Experience car buying your way with Woodhouse, a trusted auto partner since 1975. Funplex has a limited time offer that'll deck your halls. The Funplex tis the season pass sale. Save big through Christmas and think warm thoughts as you and yours dream about sun, fun, sliding and chilling for summer of 23. Not only will you be saving 45 bucks off the regular price, but if you're doing your holiday math, three visits and the pass pays for itself. Plus, there's always special offers to season pass holders on concessions, merch, and more. The Funplex tis the season pass sale. Now through Christmas at fun-plex.com. MD West One's team of neurosurgical spine specialists is the largest and most advanced in the greater Omaha metro. MD West One has been voted the number one private practice and number one in neurosurgery and spine by Best of Omaha year after year. They can help if you're suffering from recurring neck and back pain, weakness or numbness in your extremities, sciatica pain, or any other recurring issues stemming from your neck or back. Go to mdwestone.com to meet the spine team at MD West One. I wanted to know why some people who get COVID-19 get it so bad. I found out it may be because they have a high risk factor, such as heart disease, diabetes, being overweight, smoking, and asthma. Even if symptoms feel mild, these factors can increase your risk of COVID-19 turning severe. So if you're at high risk and test positive, there are things you can do, like asking your healthcare provider if an authorized oral treatment is right for you. Learn about an option at TreatCovid19.com. This message is sponsored by Pfizer. It's the biggest New Year's Eve party in town. The Omaha Mavericks take on St. Lawrence Friday, December 30th and Saturday, December 31st. Come join all the festivities on New Year's Eve with open skating after the game and dueling pianos. Plus the ball drop at midnight. Let's pack the Baxter. The series starts Friday, December 30th and continues Saturday, December 31st with a New Year's Eve party to follow. Get your tickets at the Baxter Arena box office by calling 402-554-MAVS or at omavs.com slash tags. Shop Woodhouse Place Hyundai and Nissan, 144th and Giles. KOZN Bellevue, Omaha, Council Bluffs. Now back to mornings with Sharp and Hamlin on 1620 The Zone. All right, I have bad news on a, on, a, on a great news day after an incredible theater sports weekend. If it is your whole goal and you're fighting Mother Nature and winter begins this week, like the, I, I, have does a, it ever. I have a couple of people that even uh, as us adults, like kids, I get, okay, you don't want to wear a coat. You don't want to put on the boots. You don't want to put on the gloves. You want to put on the hat. You don't want to put on the coat. Okay. You might even want to still wear shorts. <laughs> But somehow you transition to wearing joggers. But I have friends, and I'm kind of one of them, but not as much. I've, I've, I've wimped out that refuse to wear a winter coat before Christmas. This week is going to challenge you. I'm just watching the weather. Uh, it is going to be dangerously cold when we come in on Thursday morning. It's a yeah. tough day to throw the ball. Yeah, and the wind, like a fluffy snow could be accumulating. So if you are one of those people that refuse to wear a coat before Christmas, this week will challenge you more than it's ever challenged you. And I'm just going to give you a tip. I didn't stay at a Holiday Inn. I don't have a doctorate, at least in that field, is uh, you might want to bundle up just you know so that you can enjoy your Christmas and you're not going to be sick. You heard it here first. Mm-hmm. There you go. That's my tip of the day, kids. That's very good. Especially mm-hmm. for those kiddos. Yeah. The, even the younger kids. RSV is a real thing. That's right. Around. You're going through it in your house. Well, we had it this time last year was the most brutal Christmas because we had to do the two night stay in the hospital because our son got it. So it's yeah. Heed the advice of one, the wise, the noble one. Gary Sharp. Thank you. All right, kids, you've been warned. Uh, did you see yesterday? So morning sports is great. I love I love live morning sports. Like when the open is going on, 
in July. It's great because we have golf while we're on the air. Mm -hmm. We have basketball in the NCAA tournament while we're on the air. Last week, we had volleyball going on at 10 a.m. with Nebraska and Oregon. That was fantastic. We had morning sports, you know, these holiday tournaments in college basketball, they're playing in the morning. Uh, we even got a, a morning bowl game the other day. So I love morning sports. And yesterday we got maybe the greatest morning sport ever. It's going to be the most watched ever World Cup with the legacy and the star power that was involved in the between Argentina and France, Argentina in penalty kicks. And now 26, the majority of the World Cup is going to be right here on our soil. So what can USA soccer be? Can you imagine if the U.S. ever got to the point, and it might be just a heck of a pipe dream to think they'd even get to the Final Four. But maybe if the U.S. was ever in a position like either one of those countries were yesterday. You saw the video out of Argentina. You also saw uh, Cantor, who is the legendary soccer announcer who is from Argentina, who is crying after the final penalty kick is made. I mean, do we have, we do, is the American announcer, would he cry on air if the U.S. pulled something like that off? But I, if he lost money, maybe. I, <laughs> <laughs> but I wonder watching that is, are you drawn to international soccer because of the World Cup? Does the World Cup give a bump to, adding more soccer fans in this country because in 26 eh, who I, I find myself and again i'm i'm a casual soccer viewer i get into it every four years this world cup somehow kept me in it once the u.s was eliminated then i'm going to find a way to go to kansas city or miami or somewhere mm -hmm. to watch I, even if the u.s isn't playing i want to go experience a world cup in person i wonder in this country if you were like myself a casual soccer viewer who now, you know, uh, Messi is the goat. That debate is now over. I mean, what a what an incredible, you know, end to his, you know, probably World Cup career. And we'll just wait for him to come to the MLS when he's at the end of his uh, career <laughs> and make tons of money and get your tickets on be a showboat yep. everywhere. Yep. Um, I wonder if if people will be drawn to paying a little bit more attention to international soccer between now and when the World Cup hits in twenty six, because not every Every match is like yesterday, mm -hmm. um, but you can see when you have world-class athletes, what delivered like that did yesterday. I, I mean, it, it was it was great, Nick, to see like almost everybody, if you were like on social, if you're on Twitter, collectively, everybody was watching the same mm -hmm. sporting event. And, and in the short time that I've been on the show, I've, I've kind of, you know, poo-pooed my interest in, in just the sport of soccer. But like a lot of sports fans, every four years... I'm about country. Hey, if U.S. men's national team is playing, U.S. you know women's national team is playing, I'll give it a gander. As you anticipate that that build up between now and when it's here in the states in 26, there's going to be two schools of thought, in my opinion. You're going to have the soccer fans that you know whether they're like you, Gary. They were moved by what they saw, even beyond the elimination of the U S team that they stuck around and they saw something they're like, wow, this is, this is pretty sweet. And you probably forget about that maybe in the next year or so, but as you get maybe two years out, you start getting an idea of what the team's going to look like. You're paying more attention. You're, you're getting up on weekend mornings to watch some EPL. However you want to get into the sport, that's going to happen because I'm, I'm eliminating the, the, the diehard soccer fans. They already have their place. They know exactly how their weekends are, are spent. They could care less whether it's a World Cup or not. Just kind of ramps things up. Then you're going to get the crowd that, as it gets in the United States, you're going to get the not even the casual sports fans, but just the event fans, the ones that have FOMO. And they're going to feel like everybody's talking about it. It's going to be unavoidable. I mean, you think about a World Cup and its popularity, which, again, I cannot downplay whatsoever. It's, it's huge. I get that. Then you add on it being here in the United States. That FOMO, that buildup of the event itself, you are going to draw so many people in. Because I do remember when I was a, a freshman in high school in 1994, and we were watching it all the time. We were watching games all the time. I remember seeing games at Soldier Field. Not, I wasn't there, but 
watching games on TV. I'm like, oh my gosh, the Soldier Field are playing. Like it was just, yep. it was remarkable to me. And then we got into the video game FIFA World Cup because yep. of the World Cup. So you're going to win so many people over when it does come to the United States. And I, I do, I, I think you're going to continue to see people start to maybe find a routine to involve more soccer into their sports viewing between now and the World Cup. It might be closer to the World Cup, closer to 2026, or you might have a little bit of that adrenaline from this last one that you kind of want to carry over. So EPL may be getting new fans. Uh, uh, MLS, I don't, I don't know about that. But, yeah, I, I think – the there's... MLS viewing is strong. I mean, they just signed a mega TV deal with yeah. Fox. But, I mean, compared to – Oh, yeah. Well, yeah, it, you know. it is the the – Depth of talent will never right. be the same as. But yeah, I, I, I think there, there's sufficient right. momentum. I think that's only going to continue. And as you bring that here to the states in 26, leading up to that, I, I think it's going to be a monster. I, I can't, I can't dismiss that at all. A ton of appreciation and respect. I mean, that was world class soccer yesterday. And Mbappe will be, will he be 27 when the World Cup is on our soil. Because that, that's yeah. the French guy. Yeah. No. Um, Just making sure. The French guy. I'm exactly where yes. Nick is. So I'm now no, he's a, now now Jimmy, he's a name that you should know. Like yeah, there's probably three names. Well, I'll give you four. I know Messi. Ronaldo have, Messi. Ronaldo Ronaldo. So in this country, you know Pulisic. Oh, yeah. Okay, Captain America. Yeah. You Especially know now. Messi, Ronaldo, and Mbappe. Mbappe. Why, why are we forgetting? About... I remember Zidane and what happened in are 06. We, are we just saying goodbye to Neymar? Yeah. I mean, I okay. Tears. Uh, okay. Tears. Unfortunate. Now the last World Cup, Neymar. There's there's also watching yesterday, and you know, I mean you're in we're all used to watching sports in this country where we're just and have an abundance of replays after a big play. You just when you're watching soccer, you don't get replays. So you forget about like some oh, of the great true. plays. Like no one will ever forget about the Martinez save at the end of extra time. Mm -hmm. Or um, you know, the the fact that how would you like to have the pressure of an entire country on your shoulders when you can end it with a made penalty kick? <laughs> I'd get the yips. But, but you don't. It, it did dawn on me as I watched that. And they're, they're just like in the in the second half and how the momentum shifted where Argentina was rolling. And then in a span of about 90 seconds, all of a sudden France had all the momentum that they don't show replay after replay mm -hmm. in the middle of a soccer match. So you forget about some of the big plays. But I, I think there has to be at least a little bit of a bump of, okay, this was the great theater, I keep using that word, of the weekend of sports that you got me. I'm going oh, to find much a more way to watch it at the high level. Because mm -hmm. the MLS compared to watching EPL is nowhere close. It's still soccer, but I'm saying, will it develop an international soccer base? And it'd be great if the U.S. did exactly what they did this year, but then a step further yeah. when it's on their home soil. Oh, if they did... Mm -hmm. And I'm with Nick. I watched in '94. I mean, it's it's great when it's in the summer because it's the perfect time. You're like, right. I'm I'm in. This is and maybe it is FOMO. I I don't know. I mean, you just want to be part of the conversation. But uh, I'm excited for it also because you don't have the time differences, so it'll be in real time. It'll be fun. I saw a Pavelka tweet out. So Cantor, who is goal, and he's he's an Argentinian, mm -hmm. so he was crying on air. How great was that? I saw Pavelka tweeted out. That if Nebraska basketball won an NCAA game, he would cry on the air. I don't doubt it. I think I would be brought to tears if Omaha men's basketball made the NCAA tournament. If, especially if you know everything that's gone on on over the last four or five years, and Holland, becoming close twice. I mean, Holland sits that three pointer. Well, Are you, that, no, that was tough. Seriously. That was tough. That was um, that was tough because we had Pat Eberhard on in the post game, and he was crying. Yeah. Uh. And I was like trying not to like. Yeah. yeah, it gets you because you get to know them. They become friends as you travel yeah. with them and you follow the team. People don't understand that you become part of it. Not to bring well, that up, but, but then, I was then being... the fact that that's your country, your home country. Well, that yeah. finally wins a World Cup. <laughs> it yeah. adds a yeah. bit to it. I by the, not to bring that up. I just remember being behind that uh, shot because we were sitting opposite end zone. I thought it was in. When he launched that thing, I'm like, oh my god, that's going down. You got a better angle than I did. I was behind it. Yeah, I just, I, I know why TD <laughs> took that shot, and God bless him. I mean, he's he can do whatever he wants. God, Marcus Tyus is yeah. wide open on the left wing. Uh, Omaha, by the way, begins Summit League play tonight at home against uh, Denver. Uh, Denver is nine and three. Pretty good team. Very athletic. Uh, they have 
second year of a new coach, so they have gradually gotten better. Last year, when Denver and Omaha played, that's the Frankie Fiddler. Fiddler got loose yep. lead on Sports Center, mm-hmm. where he scored the last eleven points of the game and got the game-winning bucket. Uh, I curious though. So Omaha's four and eight played one of the toughest, if not the toughest, schedule in America. Denver is only a two and a half point favorite. Hmm. Well, what does Vegas know? What's Denver's non-con look like? Uh, they most recently lost to UCLA, got blown out in Westwood. Now it's a little bit choppy. I mean, yeah. they played Tom, Dick, and Harry, you, all at the same time. Yeah, but they're yeah they're they're getting better. Tom, Dick, and you, Tom, Dick, but, and Harry. but not Bill. But don't, and Mary. You, don't you think you would look at a two and yeah. a half point spread with intrigue and go, wow, yeah. okay. So that's at seven o'clock tonight. You can either join us at uh, Baxter or on News Talk twelve ninety Quill. Uh, when we come back, Jeff Sims is in the fold. I would imagine that Malik Hornsby, who may not begin as a quarterback at Nebraska, the transfer from Arkansas, who was on his weekend visit this weekend, is probably around the corner on making his decision. But what does it mean for the quarterback room? And do we have an inkling of what the offense will look like under Marcus uh, Satterfield? We'll get into all that as you return. Bill Bender from the Sporting News talks some college football coming up at uh, 8 on Mornings with Sharp and Hanley on 1620 The Zone. Hey, Santa Barkley is back. Boy, was he back last night. And this year he's giving new FanDuel customers exactly what you asked for. Unwrap the gift of a no sweat first bet up to $2,500. Back if free bets, in free bets when you sign with promo code zone. That's up to $2,500 back if your first bet doesn't win. Now is the perfect time to give FanDuel a shot because the app is easy to use. It's safe, secure, and they're always giving you great promotions. And when you win, you're going to get your winnings quickly. And it's easy to find your bet. Well, I had a loaded card this weekend. Didn't have to worry about going here or there. It was all right there on an app that is super manageable. So see for yourself why America's number one sports book is FanDuel. Get in the holiday spirit with a no sweat. First bet of $2,500 back and free bets from Santa Barkley when you sign with promo code ZONE. That's promo code ZONE. 21 over, present in Iowa. First online real money wager only. Refund issued is non-withdrawable. Free bets that expire in 14 days. Restrictions apply. See terms at sportsbook.fanduel.com. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-BETS-OFF. Mornings with Sharp and Hanley on 1620 The Zone and 1620thezone.com with Gary Sharp and Nick Hanley. on 1620 The Zone is brought to you by MD West One Orthopedics, Neurosurgery, and Spine. Previously on Unsportsmanlike Conduct. That would be a solid down payment on a home. Well, it would have been. I don't know what you need now. I'm never buying a home either. But in the old days, I bet that was more than John put down on his home when he bought it. What was the $12 down payment like on your home? John? <laughs> it was not Tell a me $12 about the old days, payment. Grandpa. The only down payment we had on our house was how fast could I build it out of sod? Unsportsmanlike Conduct with John Bishop and Josh Peterson. Weekdays 2 to 6 on 1620 The Zone. Your Omaha area forecast from the Godfather's Pizza Weather Center and KETV Newswatch 7 on 1620 The Zone. Cloudy and cool for your Monday. Temperatures today up near 30 degrees in Omaha, but still feeling like the low to mid 20s. A chance of snow arriving as we head throughout the morning and into this afternoon. Snow remains light with up to an inch possible in Omaha. Gusts today up to 20 miles an hour out of the southeast, shifting out of the northwest as we head on into tonight. Gradual clearing for Monday night and overnight low near 2, but feeling like 10 below zero. I'm meteorologist Caitlin Harvey with KETV Newswatch 7. Mornings with Sharp and Handley, brought to you by MD West One Orthopedics, Neurosurgery, and Spine on 1620 The Zone. 1620 The Zone. Traffic. From the burn, AC, heating, plumbing, and more, time-saving traffic center. We have no accidents to report at this time, but you can't expect a little bit of slowdown from 84th to 77th on Dodge. Then along Highway 370, it looks like you can expect some very minor delays from Richland Drive to 90th. And other than that, it looks like your commute this morning should be pretty smooth, even if you're running a bit late. As always, remember to stay safe and wear your seatbelts. I'm Chris Scott. This time-saving traffic was brought to you by IBEW Local 22. Looking for a career, not a job? IBEW has immediate openings for residential electricians. You'll receive top pay, fully funded family health care, and retirement benefits. Invest in yourself with IBEW Local 22. Call Michael at 402-810-0789. Everybody, it's Michael Sevier for Ted and Wally's. Two locations, one in Benson, and of course, the old one. You know it very well, down in the old market. I've been going to Ted and Wally's now for, wow, it's over 20 years. 
I first moved here, my wife took me, stood in line in the old market, and I remember it very well. It was a sweet corn ice cream, and I thought to myself, sweet corn ice cream? Well, I have to try this because I love corn, love ice cream, and it was amazing. It's just one of 3,000 flavors that Ted and Wally's has made over their more than 35 years in business. It's incredible. It's such a great place to go and just enjoy nostalgia. You have some old-fashioned flavors. You have some new flavors. They're always there to make it delicious for you. Call ahead to get a pint or a quart or a half gallon set up so when you drop over, you can just grab it, take it home, have it ready for just a treat at home or maybe for a holiday party. It's over 3,000 flavors. Check out our social media. See what the flavors are today. It's over 35 years of nostalgia at its finest, made in old-fashioned way in a 100-year ice mountain freezers. Check out 10 Wallies today. Thank you to everyone who voted for MD West One in the Best of Omaha contest. We are thrilled to announce MD West One has been named the number one private medical practice in Omaha for four years in a row. MD West One is also named first place in the orthopedic surgery and neurosurgical spine surgery. Our 34 board certified surgeons specialize in treating every bone, joint, or muscle condition from head to toe. Go to mdwest1.com to meet the number one place to go for orthopedic, neurosurgery, and spine. Hello friends, Kent Pavelka, wishing everyone happy holidays and best wishes for the new year from John Higgins Weather Guard. You know, we're fortunate to live in such a great community with a strong economy, good schools and public service, along with a high level of health care and simply a great way of life. We appreciate everyone who's done business with us and we look forward to meeting new customers in the new year. Happy holidays from your fans, the Rooferees at John Higgins Weather Guard, America's leading installer of Da Vinci Roofs. Crazy coverage on The Zone is presented by Barry Law. At Barry Law, we fight alongside those who choose to fight back. Call Barry Law at 402-999-7777 or visit BarryLawFirm.com. At Barry Law, we're in it to win it. I'm Gary Sharp and this Maverick game day on Newstalk 1290 Coil, the Maverick basketball team. Kicks off the summer league season against the Pioneers of Denver. Last year it came down to a buzzer beater. Denver off to their best start of the year. The Mavs open up with a big one coming up tonight on Newstalk 1290 Coil, 6.33 game, 7 o'clock tip off. Santa says early bird gift cards are perfect for holiday gift giving. Get to early bird brunch in the Blackstone District, Shadow Lake Town Center, or Regency to buy your gift cards. Get $10 free when you spend $50 or $25 free with a $100 gift card purchase. Early Bird, not your everyday brunch, every day. Early Bird offers a variety of pancakes, Benedicts, omelets, and a full breakfast cocktail menu. For more info, click earlybirdbrunch.com. Early Bird Brunch, where the early bird gets the pancake and the holiday gift card. This is Scott Schultz from Host Coffee. 2022 marks our 50th year and business has never been better. We are rapidly growing and adding new customers, which means we need new route drivers and service technicians. We have new jobs for those new to the industry with little or no experience and new careers that require knowledge in the coffee and vending world. There's a good chance we have just what you need in a new job. Host Coffee offers competitive pay and understands the work-life balance. Apply today at hostcoffee.net slash careers and join our team. Dell Technologies' Days of Deals for Business start now with fresh, limited quantity deals on tech to drive productivity. Save on select performance laptops and desktops powered by 12th Gen Intel Core processors. Don't forget special pricing on the latest monitors, docks, and accessories, plus free shipping on everything and special financing with Dell Business Credit. Call a Dell Technologies advisor at 877-ASK-DELL. That's 877-ASK-DELL. Dingman's Mechanical Repair. We would rather be the best than apologize for anything less. And we're back. Mornings with Sharp and Ham. Here's Gary, Nick, and Jimmy on 1620 The Zone. All right, so this incredible weekend of the NFL where 12 of the 15 games were one-score games, all 15 were decided by 11 points or less. It finishes tonight. Baker Mayfield against Aaron Rodgers. The Rams and the Packers. The Packers still have a pulse, but barely in the uh, playoff. The Lions have a better pulse uh, than the uh, Packers have. Who thought you'd be saying that? Dan Campbell, coach of the year. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm got to admit, mm-hmm. even as a divisional Ryan rival. Ryan uh, Campbell. Are the Lions a divisional rival if you're a Bears fan? No. But I'm, I'm all about the, the Lions – Ascension. Love me some Dan Campbell. It's fun going to watch. back to AM. I like him. I like it. 
Jared Goff looking the part. They're just it's a tough team. It it is the true definition. We always use the example of, oh yeah, they they sort of replicate the coach's attitude or tone. I know it's a cliche, but this kind of is it. This is that example you can point to be like, actually, there's your evidence there. No, they're fun to watch right now. They're a team nobody maybe I mean nobody wants to play Don't in the let them in. Don't let them in. All right. So the Myrtle Beach Bowl is being played today as well. Marshall and Yukon. Oh, the Myrtle Beach Bowl. Probably will not have a lot of entertainment because the offenses are... Yeah. But it is being carried on television. And Marshall is an 11.5-point favorite. Hmm. Do you remember when Marshall won at Notre Dame? Remember when that happened way My back? God. When was that was week that? number two? Oh, God, that's Marshall's right. Marshall's defense that... is pretty good, but they won at Notre Dame. Yeah, that was the the week, uh, you know, Nebraska losing to Georgia Southern, too. Is it a and Who did A&M lose to? Or some... Or no, A&M lost to App State. That's right. I mean, there was three games. Not that Nebraska, Georgia Southern, given the fact that Nebraska was sort of in the funk it's been in, was monumental. But yeah, that was the the three ones that people talked about the most. What was the Notre Dame one? Well, things have gone different for both yeah. teams. Uh, so this weekend in recruiting, um, Nebraska got a guy I wanted in Collier, who is a transfer from Florida. He's a four-star in high school. He's got great length. Nebraska's secondary could ha- is going to have a boatload of competition uh, coming up into this season. Because you essentially returned four starters, and you have added Collier, and you've added Stewart, which is an important get from Philadelphia because you went into a high school. Mm-hmm. So you also got Jeff Sims last night, the portal quarterback from Georgia Tech. That came in. So that's the big development there. We'll get into that in a moment. I think another big development, because... Nebraska has six in-state prospects. The, the abundance of talent, and it's not just Power Five, Group of Five, Division One. The abundance of talent in the class of 23 statewide, north, south, east, west, is pretty impressive. That there are the amount of high school players that are getting an opportunity to play at the next level. Junior college all the way up to staying home to play for Nebraska. And again, Six in-state players, I believe, is the most since 2002. If I, if off the top of my head, if I remember correctly, if I'm, I'm wrong, Nick, uh, correct me. So you know that the in-state, in terms of Big Ten talent, is there, and Nebraska could add Mason Goldman to that mix. I mean, so that number could go up one more. They could add Nagoy. They could flip him from Iowa State. They've at least put it in his head that playing defense at Nebraska might not be bad. And you already know how much attention they pay to him. So you could have eight in-state players. Mm-hmm. But the amount of talent is pretty impressive. I don't care where you're at. And I think it coincides with this current staff, which is, I should say, uber confident. They are aggressive. They realize, and they're kind of following the blueprint of Matt Rule, what he did in Texas, is developing those relationships with the high school coaches. That you don't overlook the talent that's in the state. I mean, it's cyclical. We used to think that this is a state that produces a bunch of offensive linemen. Yeah. Well, things have changed a little bit. Look at the wide receivers mm-hmm. and tight ends that are coming out of this state, especially the wide receiver core. Yeah. I mean, Jalen Lloyd commits. Uh, Malachi Coleman is trying to decide between Colorado and Nebraska. Uh, you've got Isaiah McMorris and Davon Hall down at Bellevue West. I mean, it's the position groups are changing. But you at least have a head coach that recognizes that it's okay, and the in-state talent is not bad. Now, it's not going to be like Texas, but there are at least every single year in Nebraska, because we're in a good spot right now, the coaching has never been this good, the depth of coaching, assistant coaches that are really good all over the state, that Nebraska is now in a cycle, and I believe that it will continue, where they're going to produce five to seven Big Ten type players that could help the in-state school every year. Does that mean that every kid that's good in Nebraska should get a scholarship offer? No. Does that mean five to seven are always going to come to Nebraska? No. But this is a state that will have five to seven Big Ten type players every single year from here on out. I truly believe that. I think we have turned the corner and you have a head coach who says, you know what? I'm not afraid of in-state talent because look what I did at Texas. But he's building relationships. But he also had a couple of things stood out this weekend to me, Nick, is as they build relationships and he gets to know these coaches, it's easy as a Nebraska football coach when you're brand new and you don't know the area to come to Omaha and go to Westside, go to Gretna, go to Bellevue West, go to places that have had success, go to Omaha North. 
places that have really good coaches, have really good culture, and they produce players that have gone on to college, okay, and they fit in well. They're ready to play. They've got systems that get guys ready to play at the next level. That's easy to do. But what do you, what else do you do? Do you go to Ashland Greenwood? Right. I mean, Ashland Greenwood, if you look at that community, and they have been good in athletics for a while, especially football, mm -hmm. that is a community that looks like it's ready to blow up in terms of people moving in. Yeah. You know, between Lincoln and Omaha, it's a nice place. There's going to be some nice pieces of land. All of a sudden, Ashland Greenwood could blow up mm -hmm. and become a powerhouse. We already saw that here in the quote unquote burbs and the Millards and the Gretnas and the Elkhorns. Right, yeah. Here, they, I, I think I saw one coach tweeted out over the weekend. It might have been Barthel. He was at Bishop Newman. Okay. When was the last time a Nebraska football coach was at Bishop Newman? Now, when, when did Zach Miller go to Nebraska? I mean, been a, yeah, it's, been, it's been a while. Right. It's, been, it's been a long time. But it looks like they want to hit all the schools. I mean, you know, Matt Rule right away went to Lincoln High. It had been a decade since somebody had gone to Lincoln High. I mean, I, I'd like to see somebody go to Coach Com Tomlin's program at Grand Island. Mm -hmm. Go to Coach Cool out at Kearney. I mean, those are two really good football programs. They might not have a guy that can play right now, but down the road, they certainly do. And I love that they're they're branching out. Because, again, it's easy to stay in Lincoln. It's easy to come to Omaha and hit all the big schools, but they're going to Benson. Yeah, I mean, we already know what's going to happen at Benson. So I like that, and that's the smart play. So really, Matt Rule in three weeks, because three weeks ago today was when he was introduced, everything that he has said, he has generated the excitement on recruiting that every new coach should be able to do. If you're not, ooh, but he has done what he has said mm -hmm. in state and out of state. So you get, you get specific high schools where can you start a pipeline? Like Ramirez Stewart's high school in Philadelphia is a really good football high school, and Nebraska hasn't gotten... And Nebraska really has had really no great connections in Pennsylvania. So it had been since 99 since you got a high school kid out of there. But now you got a kid out of a high school that is there going to be another one and another one. Mm -hmm. I mean, look at Westside. So you get Alvano on Friday. Some might say he's good enough that he'll be in my Super 6 when it comes to February. That's how good Tristan is. Then Saturday you get Jalen Lloyd, who they flipped, was going to go to Florida and run track. Instead, yeah. he's coming to Nebraska to do both. And it's a huge get for Nebraska. Caleb Benning next year. Christian Jones. There are more at Westside. So these high schools that you're hitting, that you're getting commitments, can you start a pipeline? I see how this is all working. That was impressive to me over the weekend, how aggressive they were in state and that they're following through on what they're saying, because it's easy to say, hey, we're going to recruit in state. Yeah. And then in your first couple of weeks, you don't really hit all the in-state schools because you don't know. You're more familiar. Hey, we'll get back to you. But they said, no, we're going to get boots on the ground. We're going to get um, people in school. Because, again, it's not just coming to Nebraska. Marcus Siegel, who was at Omaha North, and then he went to North Dakota State. He was a really good player in high school. But he was kind of under the radar. And North Dakota State, which I think is a great evaluator of talent, goes in and gets him. Now, he goes to North Dakota State. North Dakota State, as you know, is headed to Frisco. They're going to play South Dakota State in the FCS final. Marcus decides, at the end of the regular season, I want to get in the portal soon so I can pick my spot before it's not there. So right at the end of the regular season, he left Fargo. And now he's going to Kansas State. Um, I, I look at Brock Murtaugh, who is great in the classroom. You know, he's uh, Jerry's grandson. Mm -hmm. You know, his dad, a great football player in Ryan. He's going to Colgate. And the abundance of in-state talent this year, regardless of where they're going, is pretty amazing. And I think we've turned the corner where this is going to be a yearly thing. There was another part of this weekend in in-state recruiting that I thought was pretty important. Again, building relationships, getting in places where Either Nebraska has been uncomfortable to go because they don't know people, or it's smart to go there because you know that once you turn the faucet on, yeah. it's going to start to flow. It was a big deal for Jalen Lloyd to commit to Nebraska. I look at his event at the Boys and Girls Club over in North Omaha, which does such a great job, from Dave Felici to Abdul Muhammad and all the other people that work over there, and Jalen's journey to get to this point. I mean, Dad, Dad is a fantastic track and field coach. Mom was an All-American, great family, great young man who, you know, we know about his track prowess, and he's going to make a run for the Olympics in 24. He moves from Central where he was playing football, but people probably are like, oh, I didn't know you played football. He goes to a place where he gets more attention because of the success of Westside, mm -hmm. and you see how good a football player he was. But for him to come from 
to announce it at a boys and girls club. And the, and the, the, the people that were there to hear his announcement, I think is another feather in the cap of Nebraska to turn that faucet on in certain areas of this state where once you turn it on, and as long as you keep turning the knob, you're going to benefit from that. And I, that was one of the more impressive things of the weekend for Nebraska is what they were able to do in state. The, I, I want to go back to something you brought up of Ashland Greenwood too, where this isn't a, a thing where I'm I'm going to, hey, if it were me, this is what I would do. But to your point about making sure that you're building in, in what it sounds like Matt Rule's already done that, building those relationships with a lot of the bigger schools, the class A's, the class B's of the world too. But I'm also looking at, you know, Ashland Greenwood, as you mentioned, is always very good in all of athletics, but especially in football too, in the class C ranks. Uh, you mentioned, mentioned, you know, Bishop Newman. I, I and I'm sorry, no disrespect to Vedral. I said Zach Miller, but yeah, Vedral was probably the last time they were over there. But even places like like Pierce, you know, and I know Bramer, there's a reason to be there. But, you know, Pierce has also been a, a highly successful team. You know, you're building those relationships, not saying that every year there's going to be somebody that comes out that is going to be worthy of a scholarship offer. But, you know, even places like uh, I, back when I was in Columbus, they they had it going for a very long time, a place like David City Aquinas. You, know, you think of all of those schools that have been consistently good in the, the playoffs, uh, you know, competing for state titles year in and year out. It's not that they're doing that because they have two or three like standouts that are w- ready to play, but you're going to have a football program where there's a lot of stability, there's consistency. And every now and then you're probably going to have a D one type of player. Those are the schools I always feel like are forgotten about when it comes to, uh, Hey, we respect what they're doing over there. We respect that they've got, a good program, but as far as, you know, paying it a lot of attention when it comes to athletes that we can pull over and maybe look at, give an offer to, nah, it it doesn't really come across our radar. I I think that that is important to always keep those relationships with those types of schools that with the smaller class C, class C two, hell, even some of the eight man, not again, you go and you start offering their very best player, but you have those relationships because when it does happen, it's inevitable. For the, those smaller schools, they're going to have one. I don't know what the cycle is going to be, but they're going to have one or two, you know, every four, five, six years. You want to be in on that, and that's where I, I think it goes back to that creative approach that I, I you can see this coaching staff, especially Matt Rule, implementing and to sort of keep that going. That's you know that that's how you kind of do win the the, the state recruiting, in my opinion. And th- there's just there's talent everywhere. I I have not one thing about all the in-state recruiting is have you guys heard much about the recruiting class? Like from the walk-on recruiting class? So Corva Demmer, Corva Demmer, who is a great football player at Gretna, I mean, he's a heat-seeking missile. He's a preferred walk-on. I've not heard a lot about walk-ons in this class. Mm-mm. I mean, they're going to have, they're going to announce a walk-on class, but but yeah. sat, uh, Wednesday is the early signing period. I just have not heard a lot no. about walk-ons, and it may have fallen through the cracks of we change staffs, and so this staff coming in, their whole goal is to fill up with scholarship guys. I, I don't even think under Frost and Mickey we had heard much. Out, I mean, Corvid Demma was the first one that I heard that was a, prefer, a like a preferred walk-on. So mm-hmm. I don't know what the walk-on class is going to look like this year. Yeah, that's a good point. I, especially in the state where it's talked about so much. I have not heard much about that. And like you said, you saw him, you know, point blank in front of you. You're a big fan. Uh, I mean, look at there's Gretna's going to have, I mean, look at the, look at the amount of players. Just think about the last two class A state championship games when it's all said and done, how many players on both sides of the field, Gretna West side, the last two years will go on to play college football somewhere. Last two years. Yeah. At least 10. Man, just watching that oh, game this it, year. So many winners on the field, yeah. both sides. It's it's yeah. And it's not. And again, if you're a good player in Nebraska, doesn't mean you get a scholarship from Nebraska, right? Okay. You're going to get it. You're going to find an opportunity somewhere else because the amount of talent statewide, and I'm not just focused on Lincoln and Omaha, statewide brings eyeballs into the state. Mm. I mean, look at, there's a report. Caleb Henry was the first I saw to report, and I got it confirmed by somebody that saw actually him this weekend. Uh, Ryan Held is in line to become the new Nebraska Kearney coach. Okay, so the hey, former Nebraska, former That's Husker, awesome. former running back coach, probably was in a tough situation mm-hmm. at Nebraska. Okay making the jump from central Florida back to his alma mater to coach that position. But he's, he's a, he's a very aggressive and personality driven recruiter. When we were talking last week about the UNK job, 
He's a name that kind of went up, yeah. kind of came up. We were talking more Bill Bush and maybe a Jeff Jamrock. But Ryan Held, I think, would be a home run. So there you go. There's another guy. If that happens, if he's the new UNK coach, who knows in-state mm-hmm. and will recruit in-state players, keep them home to play at a really good Division II uh, program. I just say, hey, Coach Held, come back to an area you know, Lincoln and Omaha. Yeah. Uh, here is uh, Donnie before the break. Good morning, Donnie. Morning, guys. How are you? Good. Great, man. You know, I've, I've, I'm listening to you guys talk, and and I've thought this, and, uh, and I'll be totally up front. I'm talking about my kid when I say <laughs> um, the uh, uh, Coach Rule needs to establish, in my opinion, um, one person, one person uh, on the staff to be in-state guy from six-man to, to class a and that person like like uh if mickey would would say it's about relationships it's about getting out there and like you said there have been there have been schools that nebraska coaches haven't been to in 10 years think of how long it's been since a nebraska coach has been to cross county or to oakland craig and there have been d1 players come out of a school like oakland craig that have gone to the citadel that have gone to south dakota that probably could have gone to nebraska they need to find someone, uh, I don't know, someone uh, with a lot of high character that has a, a visibility throughout the state from a uh, five-year uh, charity program that he's run um, that is uh, 21 years old and ran uh, uh, three different offenses from three different head coaches uh, while well, he had his time at Peru State. Um, and a uh, kid with energy. I think my son, Garrison Dodge, uh, would be wonderful for this position if Coach Rule is listening. Um, and, uh, that's, that's what it is. We need somebody young and we need to hit all of the schools, not just the schools over 20,000. That's uh, just me. Uh, Have a good day, guys. Have a good you. Christmas. Thank you, Donnie. We'll reach Donnie's out to Nebraska good. HR and, and get, that ball rolling. get that ball rolling. So he, this, he never ceases to amaze. <laughs> he's always looking out for his kid. Yeah. Yeah. kid like any a, good father should. A nice football career down at yeah. Peru. Here's what, and it, it may, when things settle down, it may go back to one person recruits in state. But I like right now that they're getting all of the not not all the staff because like I don't think it well I don't know if it, has a Knighton been into a Nebraska high school maybe he has early in that first Friday, but I I know you assign one person the state. I think it's important moving forward that everybody on the staff recruits the state of mm-hmm. Nebraska. 100%. It's not their primary area, but they at least recruit the state. Yep. Here's what would have been a big key. So Travis Fisher, we know Travis Fisher, his strength was down in the South, Florida and Georgia. But if you look at his five years here, it's not like there were no in-state defensive backs that either went to Nebraska or went elsewhere. But Travis Fisher really was not allowed to recruit in-state. Travis Fisher, with Avante Dickerson earlier and more familiarity, you don't think Avante Dickerson, when he flipped from Minnesota and Nebraska was in the mix, mm-hmm. would have said, okay, Nebraska might be ahead of Oregon. So, you know, Travis Fisher wasn't really, I wouldn't, I wouldn't have to use the word allowed, but it wasn't, I don't know, hey, go to, hey, T. Fish, can you go up to West Side? And he goes, where's that at? Yeah. Where in Omaha is that at? So I would like to see him moving forward. Everybody on the staff, is allowed to recruit in state. It doesn't need to be their primary one, but at least if Ed Foley rolls in to see Mike Huffman, he knows who Ed Foley is. Right. And if EJ Barthel follows him, he knows who EJ Barthel exactly. is. Even if they're not recruiting, uh, you know, a kicker or a running back, that everybody on the staff makes their way into mm-hmm. the into the schools, yeah. not just one guy. And you see the same person time after time. It's not that way right now. I hope that it doesn't. When everything's settled down, you get a full staff because you got to, you know, get your wide receiver coaches on the horizon of being hired. Um, you know, it may change, but I hope they keep it where everybody gets to recruit the state of Nebraska. If you're the if you're the tight end coach and there's a really good tight end at Pierce, that's your guy. Right. Okay. And while you're up in Pierce, hey, stop in and see Coach Beller mm-hmm. and exactly. Norfolk Catholic. All yeah. of all of that. I mean, recruiting in state is actually pretty easy. You just have to put in the work, and you have to have some common sense about mm-hmm. it, and also not carry yourself like, ah, we're Nebraska. Yeah, you got to sell yourself, and that's one of the advantages of a new staff that has to sell themselves because nobody knows who they are. Exactly, they don't have anybody familiar on the staff except for an offensive line coach. Who, if you didn't have an offensive lineman at your school that was recruited by Nebraska, you don't know who Donnie is. Right. 
750. Bill Bender is going to join us uh, at the top of the next uh, hour. We will get into trying to figure out what Nebraska's offense is going to look like with Jeff Sims saying yes. What will the quarterback room look like? Six scholarship quarterbacks right now. You could have a six plus one if Malik Hornsby, uh, the transfer from Arkansas, commits. Uh, he would probably be listed as a quarterback, maybe not play quarterback right away, but that room all of a sudden got interesting. But what did the offense what is the offense going to look like if we got an inkling of Jeff Sims' uh, commitment? We'll do all that. We roll till uh, 10. There's Nick, Jimmy, and Gary. Mornings with Sharp and Hanley on 1620 The Zone. Gary Sharp, Nick Hanley, and Jimmy Chavez. Mornings with Sharp and Hanley. Weekdays 6 to 10 on 1620 The Zone and 1620thezone.com. from Monday Night Football on Westwood One. Join me and Ross Tucker when the Green Bay Packers take on the Los Angeles Rams at Lambeau. Last week, Baker Mayfield took the reins as a replacement for the injured Matthew Stafford and led the Rams to an impressive and dramatic win over the Raiders. Now they face Aaron Rodgers and the rested Packers at Lambeau on Monday Night Football. If it's the NFL, it's on 1620 The Zone. The holidays are here. This holiday season, we encourage you to come support our local stores in Omaha. And Westwood Plaza has everything you need to find that perfect gift. Ostad's Golf inside Westwood Plaza is a family-owned business with strong Midwest roots. At Ostad's, they pride themselves on creating experiences that turn customers into lifelong friends. Golf equipment may be what they sell, but at the end of the day, they're really in the business of fun. Come and see them for all your gift-giving needs at Westwood Plaza, 121st and Center. In Japanese, Zan means something akin to remaining, while Shin means mind or heart. In martial arts, Zan Shin refers to a particular state of heightened awareness. The dojo, Zan Shin Martial Arts, is the school of the remaining heart. Their mission is to support our community as a safe space for the improvement and protection of all. Get your loved one the gift of Zan Shin Martial Arts this holiday season. Come see what they're about on 125th and Center inside Westwood Plaza. Everything you need to shop locally for the holidays is at Westwood Plaza in Omaha. Celebrating the holidays without giving gift cards from Oscar's Pizza and Sports Grill is just, well, wrong. Seriously, how could you even consider not giving Oscar's Pizza and celebrated char wings, especially with their Thai chili bourbon wing sauce? Spend time with your family with Oscar's Pizza and Sports Grill Pizza and Wings. And give your friends and extended family gift cards from Oscar's Pizza and Sports Grill. 173rd and West Center Road for dine-in and takeout and 162nd and Maple for takeout. Last year, I enrolled my family for health care coverage through the health insurance marketplace. Do I need to enroll again? Yes, we have seen the plans available through the marketplace change and new options may be available. You must re-enroll for 2023 to ensure you or your family are in the right plan for your budget and needs. One World Community Health Centers in Omaha can help. Just call 402-502-8888 to set up an appointment with a team member. I don't have health coverage, and I'm worried that if I get sick, I can't afford the medical bills. How do I get started? Getting started is easy and free. Just call to set up an appointment with a Navigator Enrollment Specialist. We will explain your coverage options, answer any questions, help you enroll, and see if you qualify for financial assistance. Open enrollment is November 1st through January 15th. Re-enroll in health care coverage or enroll for the first time. Call One World Community Health Centers at 402-502-8888 to set up an appointment. Listen to the Woodhouse Auto Family Blue Jay Shoot Around and Overtime Shows, the Creighton Men's Basketball Pregame and Postgame Shows on 1620 The Zone. The Woodhouse Auto Family Blue Jay Shoot Around and Overtime Shows are also presented by Burton AC Heating, Plumbing, and more, by Barry Law, by Union Bank and Trust, and by DJ's Dugout. Before and after each Creighton game, exclusively on your home for the Creighton Blue Jays. 1620 The Zone, 1620 The Zone mobile app, and 1620thezone.com. Equitable Bank. We take banking personally. EquitableOnline.com. Dust. It's in the living room, the bedroom, and the bathroom. It's also in your lungs. Let's fix that, shall we? Duck Defense Midwest offers a comprehensive system that cleans, disinfects, filters, and purifies the air. They'll make your home healthier and improve the life of your HVAC system. So improve the health of your home and everyone in it. Go to cleanairradio.com right now for a special air duct cleaning offer for zone listeners. Cleanairradio.com. 
And we're back. Mornings with Sharp and Hammond. Here's Gary, Nick, and Jimmy on 1620 The Zone. Bill Bender for the Sporting News will dive into college uh, football. Max Duggan, by the way, when TCU season is over, he is done. He's moving on to the NFL, but he is going to play against uh, Michigan. Announced that publicly uh, yesterday. So, uh, Bill's coming up up to the top of the hour on uh, college football. We will discuss the quarterback slash offense, potentially what it might look like. But let's play a quick game here. So Nebraska right now, six quarterbacks. Yay or nay, we'll go around the room. I'll just... I will not be part of this. I will just be the facilitator. Yay or nay here in 23? Casey Thompson. No. Brock Purdy. No. Logan Smothers. I'm going to say yes. Heinrich Harburg. Oh, we heard something last week that got me interested. I'm still leaning to no. Richard Torres. Yes. Jeff Sims. Well, yeah, obviously. Well, just, well, you gotta, you gotta ask the question. <laughs> yeah, I mean, what do you think he's gonna flop tomorrow? <laughs> no, <laughs> that'd be a no. quick turnaround. Never mind. I saw the forecast for Thursday. I'm good. Yeah, it was, uh, and so to get to seven, because there's no way that there will be seven at the end of, well, the first part of May when the next portal would open. Malik Hornsby. Yay or nay? Everything I'm hearing tells me yay. But as you mentioned, doesn't necessarily have to be a quarterback. No, I think there is a very strong possibility that we'll be coming here. I don't think Nebraska said, hey, the first to take our offer. Mm -hmm. I think they said, we'll take as many guys as possible because there is the part of, you don't know the availability of Casey Thompson if he's planning on playing in 23. Now, I don't think he's going anywhere because if he was going to leave because those spots with quarterbacks can fill up pretty quickly on your desired location, mm -hmm. that he would have probably already put his name in. So I think he's either, I'm going to try and see what my stock in the NFL is or I'm coming back. But remember, is he going to be available for spring football? So you can't sit around for Nebraska and not knowing Casey Thompson and say, um, yeah, when, when you decide, let us, let us know. Right. You have to you have to protect yourself and build for the future and build the depth in that uh, quarterback room. But uh, Jeff Sims committed yesterday from uh, Georgia Tech, where he's a runner, a thrower, and throws a lot to the other team. We will <laughs> we'll get into the addition of uh, Jeff Sims, but I think it also gives you an indication of what they want to do with the offense uh, moving forward. We would like to talk to Bill Bender from the uh, Sporting News. Again, one of the friendliest guys that we have on this show. He's always happy. That's why I wore the Ohio hat. Yeah, he lives in Columbus. Mm -hmm. mm, Ryan Day. Ryan Day didn't have a good weekend. I'm still curious on... So that th th with Bill, it's going to be fun to talk about. On the, the shockwaves, if you will, with Bill and Ryla decommitting. Because I get our, I get our interest in it. But... Number one quarterback in 2024. It's not just a, oh, well, because he's a Ryle, it, it means a lot to us and we're interested. I mean, that's a big deal. That's a, especially Ohio State. It's a big deal. Uh, I think I, I said Brock. I meant Chuba. Yeah, I know who you meant. But if you're asking me Brock, no, Brock won't be. But there. I believe that uh, overwhelmingly people would take Brock over Chuba. Yeah. The only problem is Brock is playing in the NFL, not yeah. right now, which. The Super Bowl MVP, Brock with, Purdy. With no eligibility. Yeah. Unfortunately. So Chuba Purdy. What do you think about Torres real quick? Yeah or nay? Uh, I'm intrigued by him, but what they want to do with this offense, I don't think he's a fit. Hmm. But we don't know. We've never seen him. We've yeah. only heard about him. I, I would like to see him with a big boy arm, but I just think in what this offense is going, I don't think he's a fit. And Logan? Logan Smothers actually might be a really good fit for this offense. Like a really good fit. It now that, that guy, now that I expect him to guy, be back, he'll guy, probably go to the point. The guy likes being in Nebraska. He does. He really does. That's why I'm saying, yeah, he's back. All right. Bill Bender, next on Mornings with Sharp and Hanley on 1620 of the Zone.
Hey, at Woodhouse Mazda during the final days of the season of inspiration event, get your new Mazda and the first year of maintenance is on Woodhouse. Plus, make no payments for 90 days on any or certified pre-owned Mazda when financed through Mazda Financial Services. One of the best ways to enjoy your holidays, all of the holiday travel, making sure you are as safe as can be. And also the convenience. You can shop Omaha Metro's exclusive Mazda dealers, Woodhouse Mazda. You can shop their inventory, apply for financing, and even schedule service appointments on WoodhouseMazda.com or WoodhousePlaceMazda.com. Or visit them in Bellevue off of Highway 75 and Chandler Road at Woodhouse Mazda or in Millard off of 144th and Giles Road at Woodhouse Place Mazda. You won't find a more streamlined sales process with a friendly and knowledgeable staff and no pressure sales. It's the final days of the season of inspiration events, so stop in or shop online and find the Mazda vehicle that is perfect for you. Trust me, as a Mazda owner myself, you'll be hard-pressed to find a safer and smoother ride. Happy holidays from everyone at Woodhouse Mazda and Woodhouse Auto Family, a drive worth experiencing. Mornings with Sharp and Hanley on 1620 The Zone and 1620thezone.com. Live from the Host Coffee Studio, this is 1620 The Zone. 1620 The Zone Traffic. From the Burden, AC, Heating, Plumbing, and More, Time Saving Traffic Center. We have no accidents to report at this time, but you can expect a bit of slowdown heading eastbound along I 80 near 72nd Street. Then on Industrial Road, be prepared for some significant delays from 149th to 138th. And on Dodge, be prepared for just a little bit of slowdown from 94th to 90th. As always, remember to stay safe and wear your seatbelts. I'm Chris Scott. This time-saving traffic was brought to you by the Nebraska Lottery. Through January 4th, 2023, enter non-winning Nebraska Lottery Holiday Wishes scratch tickets for a chance to win one, five, or $10,000. It's the Holiday Wishes second chance promotion, so enter today. Top prize odds vary by game. Celebrating the holidays without giving gift cards from Oscar's Pizza and Sports Grill is just, well, wrong. Seriously, how could you even consider not giving Oscar's Pizza and celebrated char-buffed wings, especially with their Thai chili bourbon wing sauce? Spend time with your family with Oscar's Pizza and Sports Grill Pizza and Wings. And give your friends and extended family gift cards from Oscar's Pizza and Sports Grill, 173rd and West Center Road for dine-in and takeout, and 162nd and Maple for takeout. Hey, it's Jan from Toyota, reminding you that Toyotathon is on and here to help make your holidays extra magical. How? Maybe it's driving in a Tacoma in search of the perfect hill to sled down. Popping from store to store in a Prius to find the perfect gift. You did it. How'd you know? Or it could be something much more simple, like surprising loved ones in a RAV4 hybrid. You made it, Bobby. <laughs> you're all grown up. And seeing their faces light up when you pull up to their home. Stop by Toyotathon and make this holiday one to remember. It's the perfect opportunity to gather with your friends and family, both near and far. Dealer inventory may vary. Current offers on these vehicles end November 30th. Offers are subject to change throughout Toyotathon, which ends on January 3rd. See your participating Toyota dealer for details. Toyota, let's go places. See your independently owned Omaha Metro Toyota dealers, Corwin Toyota of Bellevue, Village Point Toyota of Omaha, or Baxter Toyota of La Vista. There are actually two kinds of cigars. The first is the one you smoke with beloved family and friends. The second, the one you enjoy with friends you've just met. And you'll find both at Hearth Cigars and Pipes Lounge. At Hearth Cigars and Pipes Lounge, there's a well-stocked humidor with some of the best bands from around the world and a bar with your favorite cocktails and other drinkables. So what do you say? Which cigar will you be enjoying tonight? Hearth Cigars and Pipes Lounge, just off I-680 and 48th Street next to Cubby's. I know my mom does everything she can, but most days we still don't have enough to eat. Thousands of children in Nebraska and Western Iowa face food insecurity. Visit foodbankheartland.org to donate and help nourish hungry families. Holiday shopping? Back by popular demand. Stop by Cops at 72nd and Jones, Shadow Lake Town Center, or 180th and Center to grab a bite and buy a gift card. Cops gift cards are sure to please. Cops makes delicious pizza, fresh salad, and tasty charred wings with a variety of homemade sauces. They even offer keto crust. Dine in, carry out, or delivery. Cops, now with three convenient locations to serve you. 72nd and Jones, the Shadow Lake Town Center, 180th and Center, or click CopsPizza.com. 
Shop Woodhouse Place Hyundai and Nissan, 144th and Giles. KOZN Bellevue Omaha Council Bluffs. Now back to mornings with Sharp and Hamlin on 1620 The Zone. Half time brought to you by Heart Cigars and Pipes Lounge. Just off 680 and 48th Street next to Cubby's, it's Heart Cigars and Pipes Lounge. Right, bowl season is upon us. Portal season is upon us. Early signing period is upon us. We got all kinds of things going. College football uh, never uh, sleeps. Either does this guy. Uh, one of our favorites from the Sporting News, Bill Bender, joins us. Happy holidays, Bill. Welcome back to uh, 1620 The Zone. Hey, how's it going, guys? Thanks for having me on. Hey, let me, let's uh, first start. We're going to go a couple of different ways. But I first want to start right in your backyard in Columbus. And over the weekend, Dylan Riola, and you know the connection here at Nebraska between dad and uncle, and he's been here numerous times, but he's committed to Ohio State, the number one player in the class of 24. They got their quarterback. Then they also got the quarterback for 23 earlier in the week, and I think everybody was shocked when Dylan said, you know what, I'm a free agent now. Everybody is wide open. What is the general reaction you're hearing in Columbus about that news coming from the number one prospect in 24, decommitting from the Buckeyes? Well, I mean, obviously they 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 did recruit another quarterback in last in last week. They did get a commitment from him, but I mean, Raiola. That's I think generally most people think when you get one as early as he committed to Ohio State, it's never a sure thing, right? Mm-hmm. So I mean, this I don't think it's all out shock and surprise. It's been a interesting month in Columbus because they are in the college football playoff. They do, in my opinion, have a chance to beat Georgia, and yet. There's still some lingering from that loss to Michigan and uh, everything that comes with that. Yeah, I, I'm I'm curious the confidence level and again being sort of plugged into the Ohio State uh, fan base, you know, just being there in Columbus. What is that kind of confidence level and, and kind of that that shift from major disappointment losing to Michigan, but then you know within 48 hours elation. I should say a week after that, elation of getting into the college football playoff. Like, wh- where is the, the confidence level as far as you're kind of seeing it? And they still have a ton of talent. I mean, yeah. they, they, whenever you get that much NFL talent on your roster, I think they've got to play fast and loose. That term was used over and over again last week when uh, they had media availability with Ryan Day. Um, but I mean, there was also the way that, you know, how the media works, uh, mm-hmm. how we work, I should say, is that there were probably just as many questions about the Michigan game as there were the Georgia game. So to me, mm-hmm. they, they're in that tough spot where they can't look ahead to Michigan and they can't look back to Michigan. Yeah. They've got to focus on a really good Georgia team. And they're a, a program, as you, as you know, Bill, I mean, they're still Ohio State. Um, they still have an abundance of NFL talent. They're still really, really good. They're one of the top four teams in college football. And while they lose the number one quarterback in 24, they get a five-star wide receiver in 24. That's kind of how it works at Ohio State. But when you look back, and as you mentioned, the Michigan 45-23 lingers a month later. What was one of the most startling things about that game from the Ohio State perspective? And then we'll shift into the Michigan perspective as you look back a month later. Oh, I mean, it just, Michigan hadn't won there in 22 years. And I think, you know, sometimes just being around that rivalry as long as I've been around it, sometimes it's just about the coaching matchup. I mean, you go back to Wood Carr kind of had Cooper's number. Cooper had, Pressel had Carr. And then, you know, Michigan was bad for a while. And then Urban had Harbaugh's number. And now I think on some level, Harbaugh has Ryan Day figured out. Right. I mean, yep. you can't. I mean, just the way that I, the phrase I use is I don't think Michigan's afraid of Ohio State anymore. They used to tighten up in the second half in some of those games, and now they don't. And uh, I think it's a credit to what Jim Harbaugh's doing. Joel Klaus said this, so I can't take credit for it, but he just went back to running what he was running with Stanford and the 49ers. Mm-hmm. He's doing it his way. And oh, by the way, it's working. Bill, the. Uh, the Ohio State part of that matchup with Georgia, too. I, I want to get into the injuries, especially on the offensive side. I mean, what are you hearing? What does it feel like is going to be available to Ohio State in this one? I mean, they'll have 
everybody pretty much except Travion, who's out, mm-hmm. you know, foot surgery. And obviously, I don't need at this point, Jackson Smith and Jigba doesn't count. Yeah. I mean, he's yeah. been out for so long. So I think they've learned to play without him. Uh, you know, they're going to have to get the running game going. Whether it's Mayan Williams, who was, he looks like he'll be ready to go. Uh, Dallin Hayden, the freshman that for some reason didn't really touch the ball against Michigan. Um, they're, they're going to have to have success on the ground. They cannot be one dimensional against that Georgia team that has obviously, as you guys have seen, I mean, yep. starts with Jalen Carter up front and they've got NFL difference makers at every level of that defense. Bill Bender from the sporting news joining us. We've, we've been having you on as a guest and you've been so gracious for many years. And so We've run the gamut of coaches at Nebraska in our long discussion. And so we always talk, and, and you bring up from, from somebody that's got a perspective of the Big Ten that sees this program from the outside, interacts with a lot of people from here. I know you use the word fit. So now as Nebraska's on their next coach, and you look at Matt Rule and you know the Nebraska program, do you think, Bill, that Nebraska, and I know he hasn't coached a game, They did in terms of IL era and all the changes that have happened in the game. I think he's a guy that I, I use the phrase kind of a makeover artist. He was mm-hmm. that at Temple and Baylor. I don't know that Nebraska needs a full fledged makeover though. I just think better recruiting, better talent development. One of the things uh, I was pointing out about Luke Fickle, and this is not necessarily a Nebraska thing, but if you look at how he developed talent at Cincinnati, for the NFL, and you're seeing those guys on Sunday, what do you think he's going to do at Wisconsin? Mm -hmm. So I think if Matt Rule can do that, and Nebraska needs more guys in the NFL, let's start there. Once you have NFL players, you'll be pretty good at the college level. And I always speak to you guys when I talk about fit. I mean, you're also talking to Ohio University grad who Frank Solich is Ohio University's greatest coach. And we like, we love him because, and I still don't think, you know, I'm not going to get into that conversation with you guys, but it's been a struggle to find the right fit since Frank left Lincoln. There's no doubt about that. Well, and Bill, with the new look Big Ten upon us, with obviously the addition of USC and UCLA, but also seeing divisions go away after the 2023 season, Nebraska, Wisconsin, even Purdue with Ryan Walters. I mean, do you feel like those programs have positioned themselves, at least as best to what we know now, to be able to adjust successfully? to a conference that will have no divisions, but a conference that, you know, you need to stay relevant, especially those brands. Oh, I, I think there's no doubt that it's an opportunity for the uh, Big Ten to have the best collection of coaches, maybe not better than the SEC West, but pretty close, right? Mm-hmm. And yeah. for Nebraska, Nebraska becomes, use this phrase loosely, the center of the Big Ten universe in terms of geography with with USC and UCLA being out there. So I think it's an opportunity for them to really crank up the recruiting on both sides. Um, But when you think about the names that are going to be in this conference, Fickle, Rule, Riley, Chip Kelly, Harbaugh, um, I mean, these are James Franklin. I mean, when I do those Big Ten coach rankings next summer, you guys are going to be all over me telling me they're (laughs) wrong. But uh, it's going to be because it's going to be very tough to rank them. Yeah. So, so let's kind of look ahead, and there's a lot that can happen between now and then because your rosters are changing. But let's focus on Luke Fickle, Bill. So he gets a former four-star who went to Oklahoma, Nick Evers, to come play quarterback. He commits over the weekend out of the portal. They're in on Brendan Armstrong, who has had bits and pieces of a good career at Virginia. Fickle goes from Cincinnati, where he was in the playoff this time last year, to Wisconsin. Like, What does that, in your mind, do to the stock of Luke Fickle, and what is the challenges? that he has now at Wisconsin after a quote-unquote off year for the Badgers? Yeah, I, I think, you know, like I was saying, um, the talent development for him and the way he was able to do that at Cincinnati. I mean, Ahmad Gardner, Desmond Ritter. You want to turn on a game on Sunday, there's some guys. Ivan Pace was a All-American for us this year at Sporting News. He was a two-star recruit. So if he can do that Wisconsin where they've got to recruit better, they've been in the 50s the last couple of seasons, and marry some of those principles that Barry Alvarez built the program on, offensive line, running the football with, bringing in quarterbacks and Phil Longo, a new offensive coordinator, modernizing the offense a little bit, keeping that running back pipeline going. I think it's, I think it's the best hire of this cycle. 
I, I really do. I think I think Luke Fickle is going to do a fantastic job there. I want to get your thoughts on the other half of the college football semifinals real quickly, too, while we got you. And you saw Michigan. You've seen Michigan a lot. TCU is a team that I, I think people are kind of feeling like is Michigan from a year ago, where, eh, you know what, great, they got here. Are we really taking them that serious? And just given the strengths of Michigan, even without Blake Corm in this one, too, how how what is the best shot you're giving TCU? What is TCU having to do in this one to to pull off the upset? Well, Max Duggan has to be a factor running the football, and they have to make some big plays in the passing game early to take Michigan out of their comfort zone. Because as you guys, when you watch yeah. Nebraska play Michigan, it it wasn't glamorous, right? But they just you looked up at the scoreboard and you're like, oh, it's 35 to three. What what happened? And that's Michigan's best case scenario where they can just methodically kind of bully you with the running game and get out of dodge and um you know put some pressure on jj mccarthy who wasn't exactly accurate last three to four games but made the big plays when he had to and i think that would be tcu's best shot it is a big 12 versus big 10 game so which kind of style wins Mm -hmm. and if tcu can do that i think they have more of a shot than people think but um I just Michigan after halftime, it's going to be tough to beat them. Uh, the reason why Georgia will not repeat will be because of. Oh boy! Uh, oh, that this <laughs> toughest question I got this morning. I, let me try to come up with an answer. <laughs> I, I mean, Ohio State can beat them. Ohio State absolutely can beat them, especially if they get into a shootout. Um, it, it could be like Alabama in fourteen, where nobody thought Ohio State could win. They come mm-hmm. together and. All of a sudden, they play like the best team in the country. Uh, and then if they were to catch to, I think, Michigan, maybe something changes from last year. In the fourth quarter of that game, J.J. McCarthy moved the football a little bit. It's hard to repeat. It always is. But, I mean, they just – there's no real apparent weakness on that team, yeah. right? I can't point to one position group that that, that group's a problem. They're just – they're solid everywhere. Real quickly, wanted to wrap with this. Uh, we were talking just kind of briefly about Alabama. Huh. Uh, Nick Saban, and it, it almost seems like a very determined Nick Saban. And we were bringing up that you've got guys that you would think otherwise might opt out of a bowl game, especially a non-college football playoff uh, scenario, are, are playing. The culture, it doesn't seem to be in question, but I know some people are ready to say Alabama is now going to be starting to begin the decline anyway. What are are you buying that? What do you think we're talking? How are we talking about Alabama in the next two years? In your opinion, I was just worried you guys weren't going to be able to survive a playoff without Alabama. <laughs> I, mean, I don't know if any of us can. Uh, that's uh, um, you know what, on and Willie Anderson. I always tell people, you know, what, it's the player's decision. If they want to play, great. If they don't, I'm cool. Mm-hmm. Um, I remember Twitter went crazy when Matt Corral sprained his ankle last year. Yes. Like it's a sprained ankle. He's going to be out two weeks. It doesn't affect his draft status. Just Mm -hmm. chill out. So, uh, but as for the decline, I mean, a little bit of pressure on them next year because of that high, the highest of high standards that they've set, they didn't deserve to be in the playoffs. I don't know why next day I do. I get why politics there on the big 10 championship weekend, but they, they weren't good enough. They lost two games that they shouldn't have lost. They had too many penalties and, I do think he's trying to use this as a building block, everything you guys just said, to say, hey, our program's still in good shape. And mm-hmm. on that note, I think Kansas State might be in a little trouble. Yeah, that, that's going to be a must-watch game. Bill, as always, we appreciate it. Happy holidays to you and your uh, great family. Hey, thanks so much. Happy holidays to you guys as well. That's uh, Bill Sorry. Bender from the, the Sporting News. I So the, the line with Ohio State and Georgia has it stayed at 6.5. So Georgia's a favorite. First of all, this is an elite helmet game. <laughs> like the Georgia G, yeah. which they stole from the Packers, mm-hmm. which they stole from Gretna, Gretna. High School. Yeah, I, I, I'm glad you brought up Gretna. And then you have the Ohio State helmet. So this is an elite helmet game. So six and a half point favorite is Georgia. And I'm thinking, Ooh, why? Because Ohio State has, I don't know, they got some injury concerns. Mm-hmm. And what was the thing that that was glaring in their loss to Michigan? Like the the thing that stood out to you that was most glaring about Ohio State getting beat forty five twenty three, couldn't stop the run. Yeah, part of the physicality. Yeah, they got beat over the head. They got beat up by Michigan. Mm-hmm. Well, if that's a deficiency, 
I don't know in five weeks how you fix that. Right. So that worries me against a juggernaut and a team that loves the power running attack. Mm -hmm. Okay. When Georgia loves running between the tackles. Here's the other part of Ohio State. So another thing about Ohio State is I thought they were really sloppy with their eyes on defense. And Michigan made them pay. Well, what does Georgia do? I'm a fan of Stetson Bennett. I don't know if you know that or not, but I will support Stetson Bennett because I think he's a really good college quarterback mm-hmm. that everybody keeps doubting, and the guy just makes plays. Yep. Okay? So they're going to throw Ohio State off with a bunch of misdirection and eye candy to spring some big plays in the passing game. You see that with his wide receivers. I mean, there's no pickings this year, but there's a good collection of pass catchers that Bennett can throw to. And so you see that on the perimeter. And then once they have that going, what are they going to do? They're going to hammer you between the tackles. And I, I don't think it's more than that. I don't see how it's Georgia. I could see 35 21 ish type game. I'm curious if CJ Stroud gets very, very reliant on Marvin Harris Jr. And Harrison's been, <laughs> the guy's been spectacular. But when you look at that secondary for Georgia as well, I almost feel like they kind of welcome that. I I truly do. And so this is where I do wonder if C.J. Stroud gets himself in some trouble. And that to me, and I'm with Bill, like you know how to play without Jackson Smith and Jigba now. Mm -hmm. You just do. But Which is a shame he's been out, I mean, all year. And he's, uh, my gosh, uh, we all remember what he did to Nebraska and Lincoln a year ago. But the guy's a stud. If you have a guy like that, what it could do to Ohio State's offense and their passing attack. And Marvin Harrison Jr. has just, he has been the guy that's kind of held that together, in my opinion. If you go up against a team like Georgia, though, this is where I think C.J. Stroud starts feeling a little bit more of that pressure and just is constantly going there. That's where I see C.J. Stroud getting this. If there's anything for Ohio State is having... Smith and Jigba and Henderson, it's not like all of a sudden adversity hit. Mm-hmm. Like all of a sudden you played against Michigan and both got hurt, and now what do you do five weeks later? Right. Essentially, one has been out the entire year, and, I mean, Henderson hasn't been a factor since, what, mid mid to late October? I, I, I think George is going to repeat. Now, Georgia-Michigan final would be fantastic. I mean, that'd be some big boy pull-up-your-pants football. Yeah. But I don't know who's beating Georgia. I do not know who's beating Georgia. I think only Georgia would beat Georgia. Yeah. It's it's the, the the national championship game that I'd love to see would be Michigan Georgia because no disrespect to TCU, but if there's going to be an opportunity for Georgia to be really pushed, and this sounds kind of crazy because Ohio State and what they've established mm-hmm. themselves, they're so good. Michigan amongst the three, I think, is the one team that can push Georgia. How about Georgia? They're going to play three games in Atlanta this year. They played against yeah, Oregon. They played against uh, LSU in the championship mm-hmm. game. And now they're going to play in the playoff against uh, Ohio State. Yeah. Not bad. That's such a Works long, out. just, oh, it's the drive from Athens. Pull over, get a little nap. Make yeah, sure you don't fall Atlanta asleep. is just, oh, man. I wonder if they'll fly. Uh, there was news over the weekend. So we are kind of in that period. Today starts a two and a half, two and a half week um, dead period. So portal guys aren't going on visits. I thought you were talking about here at the station. Oh, it's Basically, in this country, it's a two-week dead period. And, you know, starts, you know, run through the holiday. But in college football recruiting, so, you know, people that have been on visits, now they got to decide, you know, Saturday or Wednesday. I'm so off. Wednesday, they're going to decide. Um, but, you know, it, it's it, in, the, in the world of, of recruiting and, and portaling and all of that kind of stuff, you are starting to get announcements of guys that are coming back. Mm-hmm. So Bo Nix yeah. said he's coming back. Think about the Pac-12. Like the last go-around for the Pac-12 before they lose their Los Angeles market, which is still befuddling to think that the Pac-12 is going to exist and Los Angeles will not be part of it. You're going to have next year, and I think Bo Nix will be a dark horse Heisman Trophy candidate. I mean, yeah, Caleb, Will- this year. Caleb Williams is going to have to go above and beyond to try and win it mm-hmm. two in a row. But if you're a good quarterback at USC and you're playing for Lincoln Riley, you always have a shot. Yep. Look at the top three quarterbacks in the Pac-12 next year. Caleb Williams, Michael Penix Jr. is coming back, and Bo Nix is coming back. And you know another thing for the Pac-12 is all three of their teams play each other this upcoming year. 
And that's great for the Pac-12. Did you think at all, this was a long shot, but part of me, just because of how volatile the offseason, the transfer portal is, that with Dillingham going to Arizona State, that Bo Nix, the season he had, would maybe follow? Uh, I know it was a long shot. No, I don't think there was any. He was, he found a home. His, he got revitalized in Oregon. I mean, he went there because of Lanning and Lanning recruiting him when he was at Georgia. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I think Bo Nix, compared to Auburn, which, you know, you make one bad pass and you're on the topic of a sports talk show in, in Auburn, Alabama. <laughs> I think he found a home. I, I mean, I think it says a lot for what Lanning has created in Eugene that Bo Nix didn't even think twice yeah. that he's coming back. How, how You know, you understand, though, when you look more into the season that he had, coming from where he was to the type of season he had, having that other year where think about what he could do to his stock. And, and I think you're right. I think when you start thinking about early Heisman 2023 favorites, Bo Nix got to be near the top of that list. 100%. Uh, I mean, all three guys in the Pac-12. And that that's that's a great for the Pac-12. Now, how will they market that? That's the thing, <laughs> because it's like, do you embrace Caleb Williams? Right. I mean, Caleb, the way Caleb Williams, a Heisman Trophy. He's on the he's he's going away. Yeah. I mean, at least the Big Twelve has been lucky enough that Texas and Oklahoma haven't been in their championship game the last two years, and they've delivered. They've had great championship games. Yeah. So you're like, we can do this without Texas and Oklahoma. Can the Pac-12 do it without USC? No, they can't. Mm-mm. That's the problem there. So you're not fully embracing Caleb Williams winning the Heisman. Oh, Cleve Cobb had to be secretly grinning. Maybe he wasn't even secretly grinning when Utah wins the Pac-12 championship game. Like, oh, okay, thank God. Maybe because you cost your team. Well, up. sure. You, there, there's the, there's the, the, the bump. Having a playoff team yeah. in there. But it, it, like, hey, we were saying all, anybody but Texas. Cleve Cobb had to be like, you know, anybody but USC. Uh, Somebody make it. Texter Josh is uh, Pac-12 is prime time now. Well, that's true. That is true. Is Colorado appealing enough with Dion U, even if they don't win? If they don't win? If they're five and seven, five and seven now. To Dion U's credit, he has won everywhere. mm -hmm. So that's, I mean, back-to-back five and seven seasons, probably not going to happen. But if Colorado is not one of the better teams in the new Pac-12 with Dion Yu, are they as appealing? Nope. Nope. Is, is Dion Yu only appealing if they're unbeaten or like 9-10 win team? Yes. I think if they're winning, even if they're an 8 win team, people are going to watch because not just the people that want to watch that are rooting or have interest, but the people who are wanting them to fail. Right. That's why I think you, you get the, the extreme one way or the other. Like a six and six, seven and five consistent Colorado team, which, as you and I know, that is really good for Colorado. It'd be great if they're able to maintain that. Wouldn't match the Dion flair, the Dion presence. Now, if they're like one and 11, it's like, okay, I want to see is Dion going to lose it? But if they're like, yeah, 10 and two, 11 and one, like, oh my God, this is awesome. It's Dion. But you're six and six, like, this is boring. Dion. What else is on? Hey, they're bull eligible. Cool. Yeah. They'll play in the Jimmy Kimmel. Gotta be one or the other. And you can't really sell like in your next TV contract, hey, we got Dion Yu, because you don't know. I mean, (laughs) if I'm a TV exec and I'm spending a lot of money, I don't, I mean, I want more than Deion Sanders at Colorado. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm not spending on one guy. I mean, I want, I want some, you know, some juice for my my squeeze of cash. All right, 829. We come back, we'll uh, dive into uh, what Nebraska's offense may look like with a a commitment from a portal quarterback named Jeff Sims, who has played 23 games at uh, Georgia Tech. We'll take a look at his uh, numbers and uh, more when we come back. It's mornings with Sharp and Hanley on 1620 The Zone. More with Gary and Nick after this on 1620 The Zone. Mornings on 1620 The Zone is brought to you by MD West One Orthopedics, Neurosurgery, and Spine. The Connor Happer Show. Connie Mack only won nine pennants in his like fifty-five years as a manager. <laughs> what a bum! Could you like imagine you... sports radio in the time of <laughs> Connie Mack? Well, I tell you, this Connie Mack guy just can't get it done. Can't win the big one. Can't get over the hump. Only five World Series. Connie Mack, more like Connie Hack. Am I right? That's exactly how they talked. The Connor Happer Show, weekdays from ten to two, on sixteen twenty, the Zone. 
Your Omaha area forecast from a Godfather's Pizza Weather Center and KETV News Watch 7 on 1620 The Zone. Cloudy and cool for your Monday. Temperatures today up near 30 degrees in Omaha, but still feeling like the low to mid 20s. A chance of snow arriving as we head throughout the morning and into this afternoon. Snow remains light with up to an inch possible in Omaha. Gusts today up to 20 miles an hour out of the southeast, shifting out of the northwest as we head on into tonight. Gradual clearing for Monday night, an overnight low near 2, but feeling like 10 below zero. I'm meteorologist Caitlin Harvey with KETV Newswatch 7. Mornings with Sharp and Handley, brought to you by MD West One Orthopedics, Neurosurgery, and Spine. On 1620 The Zone. 1620 The Zone. Traffic. From the burden, AC, heating, plumbing, and more, time-saving traffic center. We have no accidents to report at this time, but you can't expect a little bit of slowdown from 53rd to 45th on L Street. Then westbound along I-80, be prepared for a minor delay near 144th. And on dials, looks like things are slowing down just a little bit from 94th to 90th. As always, remember to stay safe and wear your seatbelts. I'm Chris Scott. This time-saving traffic was brought to you by the Nebraska Lottery. Through January 4th, 2023, enter non-winning Nebraska Lottery Holiday Wishes scratch tickets for a chance to win one, five, or $10,000. It's the Holiday Wishes second chance promotion, so enter today. Top prize odds vary by game. Email on sportsmanlike conduct on the Equitable Bank Zone Inbox with whatever is on your mind, from your hot takes to what you think is one. The Zone Inbox is brought to you by Equitable Bank. We take banking personally. We want to hear from you on the Equitable Bank Zone Inbox. The holidays are here. This holiday season, we encourage you to come support our local stores in Omaha. And Westwood Plaza has everything you need to find that perfect gift. Do you have a sewer in your life? Then So Creative has the perfect holiday gift. So Creative offers a wide range of sewing machines, embroidery machines, fabric, and everything needed to get the next project started. They offer classes for all skill levels, from an absolute beginner to an advanced sewist. Come and get your holiday gifts taken care of at So Creative on 125th and Center inside Westwood Plaza. Do you have someone in your life that could use some pampering for the holidays? Then head to Love is in the Hair, 125th and Center inside Westwood Plaza. Love is in the Hair is committed to providing the best experience to every client that walks through the door and helping every individual feel their absolute best. Over 25 years of experience in hair for the entire family, whether it's highlight, color, cuts, or waxing. Everything you need to shop locally for the holidays is at Westwood Plaza in Omaha. This week, Zone has five great deals half off. That's right. Each day this week, we'll have a new deal half off that is perfect for those last minute gift ideas. You'll find deals from Early Bird, Le Voter, Ted and Wally's Ultra Premium Ice Cream, Shug's Comfort Food, and Palm Beach Tan. All for half off. Make sure to log on at 9 a.m. each day to see what deal we have available because these half off deals will go fast. Head to 1620thezone.com and click deals now. Santa says early bird gift cards are perfect for holiday gift giving. Get to early bird brunch in the Blackstone District, Shadow Lake Town Center, or Regency to buy your gift cards. Get $10 free when you spend $50 or $25 free with a $100 gift card purchase. Early Bird, not your everyday brunch, every day. Early Bird offers a variety of pancakes, benedicts, omelets, and a full breakfast cocktail menu. For more info, click earlybirdbrunch.com. Early Bird Brunch, where the early bird gets the pancake and the holiday gift card. We tried Dynavite for gut health and immune support, and after a couple of weeks, our little gizmo was acting like a puppy again. His coat was shinier, he had a lot less scratching and shedding, and he seemed like his happy old self. My dog smelled and scratched constantly. We bathed and sprayed her, took her to the vet, but no results. Now, a little Dynavite and her food helps Bella keep her beautiful coat with no scratching or smell. Get 10% off your next order of Dynavite nutritional supplements for dogs at Dynavite.com. Happier, healthier with every bite. Over a million pets helped with Dynavite. Duck Defense Midwest makes your home healthier and improves the life of your HVAC system. So improve the health of your home and everyone in it. Go to cleanairradio.com for a special duck cleaning offer for zone listeners. That's cleanairradio.com. Make the right call, fans. The Rooferies at John Higgins Weather Guard. And we're back. Mornings with Sharp and Hammond. Here's Gary, Nick, and Jimmy on 1620 The Zone.
All right, in the next hour, it's uh, Hoop Head Monday. Jacob Bigelow on Nebraska, Joel Lorenzi on uh, Creighton. I saw where Cal basketball is 0-12. That's not good. Where is Todd Bozeman at? Where is Mike Montgomery at? Where is uh, Mark Fox at? Where is Quanzo Martin at? Not caring. Does Jason Kidd have any more eligibility? Do you know who's somebody who played at Cal that people don't realize because Cal basketball has not been good for a while? I mean, they're 0-12. I mean, even Louisville has won a game. <laughs> Which I'm, okay, I don't, I don't want to completely get off track, but the Louisville thing is still, even given what they're dealing with, is still just unfathomable to me. I'm not used to seeing, I'm not used to associating Louisville with just dumpster fire of basketball. Give me the top player in the NBA that is from Cal. Top player in the NBA. He's actually one of the better players in the NBA. But presently? But presently, uh, I I will give you a hint. They lost last night. Uh, Ben Carroll went off for 31, and the Magic have won six in a row. By the way, the Magic won six in a row. The Knicks have won seven in a row. But his team team lost to (laughs) Orlando last night. This surprises people because, you know, a lot of NBA guys, we've all seen them play in college, and we we can rattle off right away where they're where they went to college. Yeah, I'm, I'm struggling with this one. Let's see. All right, so, or, wait, who did Orlando play last night? Well, I guess that gives it away. Played the Boston Celtics. Not, no. It's not Tatum. No, he went to Duke. All right. Jalen Brown. Jalen Brown hmm. went to Cal. Jalen Brown is Cal. Mm-hmm. Wow. Wow. So before, okay, before Jalen Brown, who would be the next notable? Antonio Gates. No, uh, Tony Gonzalez. <laughs> I don't know why I said Antonio Gates. He went to Kent State. Thinking tight ends. That's okay. Tony Gonzalez. Jason Kidd. Yeah, Jason Kidd, obviously, but like Tracy between, Murray. Between that, those, those eras. What's now you got me thinking about Cal basketball and its history of success or lack thereof. What is when's the last time Cal played in the second week of the NCAA tournament? I was just, I would say Todd Bozeman, but I, I may be yeah. off. I don't know. It just it surprised me that Cal is 0 and 12. I mean, yeah, for the love of Sharif Abdur Rahim, nice or Ryan Anderson. Yeah. Ryan Anderson yeah, has pretty good player. Ryan Anderson played twelve years. I mean, they, they mm-hmm. both played twelve years in the uh, NBA. All right, last night, uh, while well, Nebraska was picking up commitments, and, and Nebraska had for a first time three week recruiting staff. I think they've had a good back to back weekends. They've created excitement. Um, they filled some needs. Uh, they've kind of laid out their blueprint, and they've recruited the blueprint. So at least that's promising. They just haven't grabbed guys to fill holes. Okay, they said, this is the kind of guy that we recruit. We have a blueprint. Like, for example, when you recruit a guy like Jalen Lloyd, Nick, kids want to go to the NFL. Not everybody's going to go to the NFL, but they want to go to the NFL. And Matt Rule's got a track record of producing guys in the NFL. Mm -hmm. But he has a blueprint. So he can go to Jalen Lloyd and go, hey, here's what your speed can do in our offense. This is what we'll do for you. And there's a guy named Thornton who we had at Baylor who had your kind of speed, and now he's in the NFL. So we have a blueprint. So that's what they've done a really good job of is rule told you what their blueprint is. And then they actually have something that they can give you a comp. Okay. If a kid who doesn't know you and you're recruiting him, you can say, Hey, this is what I see on film of you. I've had your kind of player before. And we did this with his speed, turned him into an elite pass catcher. And he went to the NFL or at defensive back because, you know, he didn't have the hands that the NFL teams are looking for but he has other instincts. We put him on the other side of the ball, defensive back, and look, he's now in the NFL. Mm -hmm. So they're able to do that. So I can tell right away that they're able to sell. Okay, so they have a plan and they've sold it because you don't get a Jeff Sims or a Malik Hornsby without a position coach. Now, the wide receiver coach is known. Everybody's speculating on who it could be. We know that he's coaching right now. Is it in the NFL or is it in college? But the wide receiver coach has been hired. Um, players are alluding to it, but they've been told not to tell anybody. So I, 
Got to imagine that is right around the corner that the wide receiver coach will be announced. But you just got a couple of position groups, Nick, where you don't have a position coach. So they mm-hmm. can't sit down on their recruiting visit and break down film. Right. So at Jeff Sims, who you know is going through this for the second time, and he brings a lot of experience, 23 games at Georgia Tech, you know that they are able to sell something. Okay, This is what it's going to look like. And now that he becomes the sixth quarterback, we all speculate on who's going to go. You know, Casey Thompson still to me, and I I think it will bode well for Casey Thompson. One, possibly a better offensive line. But what competition? Because I don't think he believed that they're, I mean, he's a competitor, but come on. They brought Casey Thompson here to start Mm -hmm. last year. He wasn't being beat out by Smothers or Purdy. So it was Casey's job. Now, it's not necessarily Casey's job if he comes back. And remember, he may not be available for spring. More than likely, he's not going to be available for spring. So he doesn't get that added advantage of being on the field if he elects to come back. We don't know that yet, but I don't think he's going anywhere in college. I think it's either come back to Nebraska or see if I can play pro football somewhere. But he, to me, is, is the guy that is best equipped right now to be the starter. But you need depth in that room. You can't go through another year with the kind of depth that you had. And especially when you're changing a little bit of your offense on what you want to do, and you've got different skill types that are all over the map in that quarterback room. So it's in flux and it's going to be turned upside down and it will filter out. Yeah. You know, again, of all of this, Logan Smothers might be the best equipped on campus to run what they want to run. So you say, well, what is the offense they're going to run? What do you think Jeff Sims committing to Nebraska means for this offense, what it's going to look like? It's a great question because on one hand, if you look at Satterfield and just his experience, use Spencer Adler, for for example, that is a, what is it, right around, I don't know, six carries a game, probably. Uh, if, if you look at what Matt Rule did, you know, talking about some of the previous guys, you know, take a guy like uh, Charlie Brewer, you're looking at 15 plus on average, probably right around that number. So, Sims, to me, is more of the latter of a guy you want to use in that quarterback run game. A guy that, yeah, can throw the ball, but also makes mistakes in doing so. Uh, He's got a good arm. He can get the ball downfield. But again, he makes some mistakes. Then there's the injury problem. Okay, do you want to put a guy that has already had a history of injuries in a position where, hey, we're going to use you, and just to make the recent example that we've all talked about with Adrian Martinez, where we got to a point where it's like, my God, Adrian needs more behind him. He cannot be the lead running back. I don't think that's going to be what Sims' primary role is, but when I think about this offense, I do think it probably resembles a little bit more of what we saw with Matt Rule teams as opposed to what Marcus Satterfield showed even at South Carolina. Given his skill set, I'm a true dual threat guy. You're not keeping, in my opinion, maybe I'm completely off. You're not asking Jeff Sims if he's going to be a quarterback that you're going to roll out there day in and day out, week in and week out to manage the offense, throw 25 times plus, run the ball five times or less. I think that number is more, we'd like to see you in the neighborhood of double digit carries. And that athleticism has to be a big part of what we're doing offensively, especially with big play opportunities. I just don't see him being a similar profile as Casey, so that makes me think the offense doesn't look anything like what you saw under a guy like Jeff Sims like you did with Casey where there's a heavy emphasis of the downfield. Well, and Trey Palmer had something to do with that too, of the downfield passing attack as opposed to utilizing a lot more of the quarterback run game. To me, that's what this offense is going to maybe sort of go back to what we've seen. See, I, I think they will have the vertical passing game that they had last year. But what Whipple wanted to do, there was no quarterback run game. Right. And then, you know, maybe if you, you know, we saw Casey Thompson, when he made decisions to run, he could be effective, but they didn't want him to run. So I look at Jeff Smith, Sims, who, you know, he's got that, that short to intermediate passing game. He's got some zip on the ball. Okay. His decision-making on when to run, whether it be designed quarterback runs or to take off, you got me. Okay. I'm, I'm intrigued. He's big enough that he can take a little bit of a beating. He's 6'4", 220. Mm -hmm. I mean, you put him up against William Watson, there's night and day. But here's what I wonder, and I I think, and and again, Marcus Satterfield, and and the places that he has been, he's adapted to where he is. Yes. And and of course, matching your skill set. And I think matching the conference that you play in. Even though there have been some interesting hires of, is the Big Ten going all air raid? I still like the Michigan philosophy. 
of run the ball, establish the line of scrimmage. I think where Nebraska is going to go with their offense is they're going to first and foremost establish the run game. You can't have three weeks ago uh, a son of a preacher stand up in front of an entire fan base and say what he said about establishing the line of scrimmage and then go away from running the football. Yeah. Okay, you're come on, it, you'd you'd lose credibility. So I do believe that he wants to do that to is first establish the run game. Then I think there will be a lot of play action. There will be a lot of RPO. I think they will run spread. That's going to now, people are going to go, uh, run the ball, run the ball, run the ball. But the Charlie Brewer comp is perfect. If you look at what he did at Baylor, I also believe that there will be a lot of offense with double tights. Yeah. I think Satterfield has shown that he likes the tight mm -hmm. end. And we know Nebraska has been effective utilizing the tight ends. Room's a little small right now. So you'll have to build that back up. Especially if you have established playmaker at tight end, like but, you did South Carolina. But I think you will have the typical numbers for a quarterback moving forward, I believe, at Nebraska will be the Charlie Brewer type. 3,000 yards passing, 300 yards rushing. And you're maybe 10 to 12 quarterback runs a game. Yep. Um, now, it may go up if you have to scramble a little bit. Mm -hmm. But I think that will be what this offense will look like. So when I see Jeff Sims, I think, okay, could you... Could you mold him into that? Here's the thing. My hangup with Sims and Hornsby is their decision-making. Now, anytime I see a guy that's thrown 23 interceptions in 23 games and he's only at 58%, I go, okay, we got to look inside of the numbers. I look and see decision-making is an issue. Mm -hmm. Hornsby is a, a track star yep. who is maybe a gadget guy, a quarterback, a wildcat type guy that wants to learn how to play quarterback but could be a better asset in 23 at wide receiver if he elects to say yes to Nebraska. Mm -hmm. But I think the biggest thing with both of these guys will be strictly, one, got to be a better passer, and your decision-making has to be better in the reads and how quickly you diagnose a defense. That'll be the challenge for both of these guys to get on the field. But right now, if I had to line everybody up, and I'm, hey, competition is great, but Casey may not be able to go through spring to have a competition right. with these guys, so these guys can have a leg up is I think competition will make Casey Thompson better, again, if he elects to stay, but I still see Casey Thompson being the QB1 if I look at an addition of Sims and I look at Hornsby. I look at these guys right now as competition for Thompson and good depth moving forward, better depth than you had in the 22 season. Yeah, if Casey's there, and this is, goes back to his experience in what he saw at Texas and even the year under Mark Whipple, he's adaptable, so if you want to make some of the, the slight adjustments, if you want to implement even more RPO, or if you would like to, and I don't want to make it sound like, hey, Casey, we're going to ask you to increase that that run volume you know, quite considerably. I, I don't think they would do that to, to Casey because, again, is that his strength? No. I, I, you hit the nail on the head of Marcus Satterfield. He's going to, what he's shown as an OC, he's going to identify his personnel and he's going to kind of develop scheme around it. Now, still concepts that he's comfortable with, but using the example of the tight ends, when you've got a stud at tight end as South Carolina, that you're going to utilize him in the backfield as well. There's going to be moments where you're going to put that guy in a position where he can handle the, the football. He, you're going to get him in space, not just you know traditional tight end looks. So when I think of the quarterback and what they can do with Casey, okay, like now we're talking something that maybe we didn't necessarily see Casey do a year ago. Well, Casey is adaptable, but more importantly, the OC is going to be adaptable with the guy that's going to give him the best chance to win football games. And yeah, as of now, Casey stays until we see anything else from these other guys. I think Casey would be that that best opportunity to get some W's. Well, I think it would be a good pickup. He needs a little help in the passing game, but in terms of inline blocking right now, uh, Andrew Metzger, that's where his strength is. I think that'd be a really good pickup for Nebraska, the tight end from uh, Colorado to add to a tight end room that is a little bit thin. Mm -hmm. uh, here is uh, Phil before the break. Phil, thanks for the call. Welcome to the show. Hey, hey, thanks. Hey, uh, you know, um, my thought was, and, and you just touched on it, Nick did, um, I really think we actually have a, a coach that is going to uh, base his offense around the talent we have in the program currently. Um, and, you know, Callahan came in and he tried to fit the round peg in the square hole or whatever it is, and then and then I didn't think that that Whipple really did what he he could have done uh, with the talent he had around him. I think he was kind of hard headed and wanted to throw the ball down the field when certain situations called. 
maybe to run the ball. Um, but I think really Rule is going to do what Frost said he was going to do when he came in. I think he wants to kind of mix the spread with the power and kind of have a kind of a cool hybrid of it, whatever that looks like. And, and just and as the years go along and as he recruits, his offense is going to change whether we're right, wide receiver heavy. Then we're going to run some, you know, heavy wide receiver formations. If we get some great tight ends in here and we have a really good line, then we're going to run the ball a little bit more, do a little bit more run uh, and play action. And so I just really feel confident that we have a coaching staff um, that is going to sit down and say, okay, this – is what we have this, these are the ingredients we have you know it's like an episode of chop where they can make a gourmet meal with a bag of sand and some rice and some pepper you know let's let's figure out what we have here play to our strengths and move along as we recruit down the road yep. phil thanks for the uh, phone call everybody be good let's uh would you be comfortable uh let's say this is this is a big 12-ish Offense, a little bit what you said, and then incorporating with Phil. So 20 of 32 every Saturday, 255. 36 carries, 166 yards. Good with that? I'd like to see. So, well, 30, so, 36 carries, and you're so, averaging once. So you're I running am. 68 plays a game. You're still running the ball more yeah. than you throw it by a tad. I am okay with that. And you uh, rules last team at Baylor in 19, 4.6 yards uh, per carry. Yeah. I am okay with that. Because I, I do think you're you're seeing, as we talked about, no, Big Ten maybe isn't going all out air raid, but there's more of that. Depending on who your pass catchers are, too. We saw last year. In, in some of those better moments with this offense, having that threat, it's just something that we haven't seen in a while. What a weird spring it could be for the quarterbacks at Nebraska. The guy that is the potential returning starter could be out for spring. The guy that might fit on the current roster the best with what you've done in the past or want to do may not go through spring. Mm -hmm. And you would have a couple of odd fits and a couple of newbies. Yep. That could be your your spring. Yeah, this is this is probably not the ideal spring to be out recuperating from surgery. If you're a Thompson and a Smothers. It's inconvenient. Yes. All right. Coming up in the uh, last hour, it's Hoophead Monday. Jacob Bigelow on Nebraska. Lost to Kansas State. They're home tomorrow for Queens University. I'm hearing just some low, low numbers of ticket sales for that MTE event. Nebraska has nothing to do with it other than it's being played at Pinnacle Bank Arena. So it's not as on your season ticket list. You got three games tomorrow. They cut the ticket prices. But I'm hearing like, Maybe a couple thousand tickets have been sold. Mm. Hopefully a huge walk-up crowd. Yeah. Huge walk-up crowd tomorrow. So Nebraska's back in action tomorrow. Creighton is back in action on Thursday night against uh, Butler off a six-game losing streak. Joel Lorenzi will join us in the last hour as well. And mornings with Sharp and Hanley on 1620 The Zone. Mornings with Sharp and Hanley returns in minutes on 1620 The Zone. From Monday Night Football on Westwood One. Join me and Ross Tucker when the Green Bay Packers take on the Los Angeles Rams at Lambeau. Last week, Baker Mayfield took the reins as a replacement for the injured Matthew Stafford and led the Rams to an impressive and dramatic win over the Raiders. Now they face Aaron Rodgers and the rested Packers at Lambeau on Monday Night Football. If it's the NFL, it's on 1620 The Zone. Many people go back to the dealership out of habit or because they think the dealer is the only one who knows how to fix their car. At Omaha Car Care, we offer a better option. We have ASE certified technicians, the technology to service any vehicle, and free loaner cars. The dealer will sell you a package of services, will provide the service you want for your car as your trusted partner. I'm Rick Betker, owner of Omaha Car Care, and we'll be along for the ride.
When it comes to e-juice, 42 Degrees always promised that we would never sell any e-juice that wasn't manufactured under controlled conditions. We never mix juice ourselves or add nicotine. Why? Because we won't take a chance with your health. So when it comes to premium e-juice that tastes great and is available in disposables or bottles, then check out our e-juice department and find out why 42 Degrees is your source for all your e-juice needs. By your mom's house. This bottle contains nicotine. Nicotine is an addictive chemical. Sports Creighton men's basketball is back at CHI Health Center this Thursday as they host the Butler Bulldogs. Tip-off is set for 7 p.m. Limited tickets are still available online at gocreighton.com slash tickets. That's Creighton versus Butler this Thursday at 7 p.m. And that's your Creighton Sports Update. 1620 The Zone proudly supports Creighton Athletics. Hey, it's Jan from Toyota, reminding you that Toyotathon is on and here to help make your holidays extra magical. How? Maybe it's driving in a Tacoma in search of the perfect hill to sled down. Popping from store to store in a Prius to find the perfect gift. You did it. How'd you know? Or it could be something much more simple, like surprising loved ones in a RAV4 hybrid. You made it, Bobby! <laughs> You're all grown up! And seeing their faces light up when you pull up to their home. Stop by Toyotathon and make this holiday one to remember. It's the perfect opportunity to gather with your friends and family, both near and far. Dealer inventory may vary. Current offers on these vehicles end November 30th. Offers are subject to change throughout Toyotathon, which ends on January 3rd. See your participating Toyota dealer for details. Toyota, let's go places. See your independently owned Omaha Metro Toyota dealers, Corwin Toyota of Bellevue, Village Point Toyota of Omaha, or Baxter Toyota of La Vista. If you've been injured in an accident and need cash now before your case settles, Oasis Financial can help. Last month, Oasis helped over 3,000 people. Why not you? If you have an attorney, call Oasis Financial today at 877-266-9107. It takes just three minutes to apply. And once you're approved, get $500 to $100,000 of your settlement in as little as 24 hours with no risk to you. That's right. Get $500 to $100,000 within one day. If you lose your case, you don't have to pay Oasis back ever. So call Oasis today to see if you qualify at 877-266-9107. That's 877-266-9107. Call Oasis today at 877-266-9107. Oasis is currently not providing legal funding in Arkansas, Kansas, Kentucky, Maryland, North Carolina, North Dakota, or West Virginia. So I switched to Boost Mobile and got this free Samsung Galaxy A23 5G phone. Why do you think they call it the Galaxy? Maybe because the Samsung Galaxy A23 has a huge screen, and galaxies are huge gravitationally bound systems of stars rotating around a supermassive black hole. And the phone is free? When you switch to Boost Mobile. Cool. You lost me at gravitationally bound. Switch to Boost and get a free Samsung Galaxy A23 5G phone. Boost Mobile. Unleash your power. Limited time offer while supplies last. New customers only. Exclusive tax. One device offer per lot. Only available on certain networks. 5G not available everywhere. Additional restrictions apply. See your local Boost Mobile store for details. This is Scott Schultz from Host Coffee. 2022 marks our 50th year and business has never been better. We continue to grow and add new customers. Many employers are looking for new ideas for their staff as people return to the office. Our pantry service is a great office amenity for staff and guests. Fresh food, snacks, coffee, water, and other beverages for employees and guests enhance your office experience with pantry service from host coffee learn more at hostcoffee.net now back to mornings with sharp and hand on 1620 the zone there is weather uh, all week long here in the uh, omaha area in the midwest some there's a wintry mix right now in southeast Nebraska. i don't know that it's snowing here traffic appears to be moving fine on dodge some flurries uh, but the metro conference tournament which begins this week um they're moving up their games a day ahead of schedule because of the weather forecast for a winter storm so they're moving up the games to tuesday so plan accordingly as the uh first i think the first two days of the tournament are on uh, campus sites and then they move to a high school, which is unfortunate because I thought it was great at Baxter Arena. Mm-hmm. So, so plan accordingly. It's that time of the year. 
And but, winter officially begins on Wednesday, the same day as signing day. Oh, come oh. on now. Here, don't do it to these kids. These kids, have, I mean, uh, we had COVID where yeah. they, they didn't get their signing ceremonies mm -hmm. in person. And now Wednesday is going to be just a mess around here. Mm -hmm. You're not going to be able to go to high school. Or it sounds like the bad well, stuff will hold off till night. Most, most kids are out anyhow, aren't they? Not, I don't, is there any schools uh, that are I in think, session right now? Yeah, I think most of them are going right now, right? They're they're down to the end. Yeah, I, I would think maybe maybe they got Thursday and Friday off, but I bet you they go till the. Yeah. Yeah. Put it to you this way: if they're at school this week, they're just there to show up physically. Everybody. Just running the clock yeah, out. I'm assuming they're. Good. Yeah. they're I'm assuming they have school, a couple days this week. In school ceremony on uh, Wednesday. It's not college. You don't get. You know what? What is it now? Six weeks. Uh, six uh, weeks. Nick says most schools are out. Really? Okay. Huh. All right. I know Nebraska's out. See, I didn't know that. The I, Chuckster I, is home. <laughs> I figured they'd be going for a couple of days. Jeez. Successful first semester. Yeah. What is today? The nineteenth. That would be the nineteenth. Man. Good for you guys. Now, when do they go back? Do they go back before New Year's? Uh, Nebraska does not go back. Chuck doesn't have to go back to school until the 24th of January. So Lincoln is out until then. Oh, no. Okay, I'm talking high schools. Yeah. Well, I, high schools probably go back right after the first of the year. Yeah. yeah. Like, like, we are out all next week, and we're not back till January 3rd. So I imagine it's the same. So are most high schools out this week? That's what Nick says. He says really? most, most schools are out. That's crazy. Like Friday was their last day. Good for them. Must be nice. Yeah. Must be nice. We're always, like, right up again. Like Don't grow up. Second. Like right before Christmas Eve. Yeah. Some get out, some get out tomorrow. Okay. After finals. There you go. It appears to be snowing outside the window now. Uh, we're we getting reports that uh, the the roadways are a little bit dicey around the metro, so be careful. Awesome. Stay in bed till next week. Take your week off. Wow, Jimmy, that was uh, quite the advice there. Yeah, you know, Jimmy, that, Jimmy, that Jimmy not, not here for productivity. Uh, Jacob Bigelow and Joel Lorenzi, they were both uh, productive. Uh, who would have thought it's December 19th and Nebraska and Creighton have the same record? Wouldn't if have thought you, it. If I, if I would have told you that a month ago, you'd have said, my God, Nebraska is having a heck of a season. They're both six and six. We'll talk to our hoop heads coming up next. More with Gary and Nick after this on 1620 The Zone. Live from the Host Coffee Studio. This is 1620 The Zone. 1620 The Zone. Traffic. From the burden, AC, heating, plumbing, and more. Time-saving traffic center. We have no accidents to report at this time, but you can't expect a little bit of slowdown from 53rd to 45th on L Street. Then westbound along I-80, be prepared for a minor delay near 144th. And on dials, looks like things are slowing down just a little bit from 94th to 90th. As always, remember to stay safe and wear your seatbelts. I'm Chris Scott. This time-saving traffic was brought to you by Fernando's. Help someone on your Christmas list get their Fernando's fix with Fernando's gift cards. Buy $100 and get a $20 gift card for yourself. Only at 75th and Pacific or 114th and Dodge. Hurry, offer in soon. Feliz Navidad from Fernando's. FernandosOmaha.com. Hey, it's Happer for the FanDuel Sportsbook, and Santa Barkley is back, and this year he's giving new FanDuel customers exactly what they asked for. Unwrap the gift of a no-sweat first bet up to $2,500 back in free bets when you sign up with promo code Happer. That's $2,500 back if your first bet doesn't win, and right now is the perfect time to give FanDuel a shot because the app, it's really easy to use. There's great promotions on there all the time. When you win, you get paid out quickly. There's also the great odds boost, which I love, live betting for NFL Sundays, NBA game days. How about Christmas in the NBA? And anything in between, that's just scratching the surface on some of the reasons why FanDuel is the best. So see for yourself why FanDuel is America's number one sports book and get in the holiday spirit with a no-sweat first bet up to $2,500 back in free bets from Santa Barkley when you sign up with promo code HAPPER. 21 and over, present in Iowa, first online real money wager only. Refund issued is now withdrawable. Free bets that expire in 14 days. Restrictions apply. See terms at sportsbook.fanduel.com. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-BETS-OFF. Hello friends, Kent Pavelka, wishing everyone happy holidays and best wishes for the new year from John Higgins Weather Guard. You know, we're fortunate to live in such a great community with a strong economy, good schools and public service, along with a high level of health care and simply a great way of life. We appreciate everyone who's done business with us and we look forward to meeting new customers in the new year. Happy holidays from your fans, the Rooferees at John Higgins Weather Guard, America's leading installer of Da Vinci Roofs. Hi, this is Doug Nodgard with Equitable Bank. Great service never goes out of style. 
When the digital age dawned, many said computers would be able to handle many of the interactions that used to take a person. Boy, were they wrong. How many times have you called your bank and gotten a recording to press one or two? Not at Equitable. Not only does Equitable answer your call in the first ring, it's answered by a human being. That's because Equitable Bank values its customers. Equitable Bank, we take banking personally, member FDIC. T-Mobile says they offer home internet, but if their internet comes from a cell phone network, you should know. It's just phone internet, not home internet. Keep your home up to speed with Cox. Cox internet is faster and has more reliable download speeds than T-Mobile 5G home internet. Cox is the real home internet you're looking for. Based on Cox analysis of UCLA speed test intelligence data, Q3 2022 and Cox serviceable areas, visit cox.com slash internet for details. Listen to the Woodhouse Auto Family Blue Jay Shoot Around and Overtime Shows, the Creighton Men's Basketball Pregame and Postgame Shows on 1620 The Zone. The Woodhouse Auto Family Blue Jay Shoot Around and Overtime Shows are also presented by Burton AC Heating, Plumbing, and More, by Barry Law, by Union Bank and Trust, and by DJ's Dugout. Before and after each Creighton game, exclusively on your home for the Creighton Blue Jays. 1620 The Zone, 1620 The Zone mobile app, and 1620thezone.com dust it's in the living room the bedroom and the bathroom it's also in your lungs let's fix that shall we duck defense midwest offers a comprehensive system that cleans disinfects filters and purifies the air they'll make your home healthier and improve the life of your hvac system so improve the health of your home and everyone in it go to cleanairradio.com right now for a special air duct cleaning offer for zone listeners cleanairradio.com Shop Woodhouse Place Hyundai and Nissan, 144th and Giles, KOZN Bellevue, Omaha, Council Bluffs. And we're back. Mornings with Sharp and Ham. Here's Gary, Nick, and Jimmy on 1620 The Zone. All right, so tomorrow, Queens University, which is making the jump to Division One, plays Nebraska in an MTE event that includes a really good game. Drake and Mississippi State. Mississippi State's been beaten. Drake got beat by St. Louis Flu uh, the other night, but they have Tucker DeVries. Uh, so it's not a bad threesome of games down at Pinkle Bank Arena, but the ticket sales are really, really low because it's not part of the season ticket package. I think a lot of people don't realize that, so they don't know they're playing. Um, but will it be a bounce-back game for Nebraska? Coming off of finals week, they go on the road to Kansas City. And they run into Kansas State, and we run into Jacob Bigelow, who joins us now. How was your uh, your your basketball Saturday that started in Allen Fieldhouse and ended, I would say, at Tanner's in the Power and Light District? Um, it actually ended at Chipotle because I was so tired. Nice. Is that a Kansas yeah, City place? I've yeah, not heard that, of that. that. That's not a not a ah. Kansas City place, but I, I mm. saw it walking back to the hotel and uh, a local burrito. How did chain. you hold on here? Stop. Have I not taught you well enough? Okay, you walk by some really good local places that are inside the power and light, and that's where you stopped? I was tired, man. I was tired. I you walked my, past them to get there. I, le- I left my house at 6.45 in the morning on Saturday to go to Lawrence. So, so you went with I, what was familiar then? Yes, I did. Okay. And I knew and what would put me to sleep quickly also. So that's, 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 that was did, my goal. Did you stop at uh, Insomnia Cookies right there? Um, I, yes, I, I did do that too. Good. Um, okay. okay. All right. Now you've, now you've uh, saved yourself. Um, but you had a heck of a day because I explained earlier your connection to Kenya Hunter, who is on Mike Woodson's staff at IU. I think right now, if I was playing the role of Tim Kruger as bracketologist here in Omaha, Houston, Purdue, UConn, and KU are like my top four. I think KU is the best passing team in basketball right now. And a lot of that has to do with Harris. I could not have imagined that they would blow Indiana out like they did on Saturday. Yeah, I I wasn't expecting that either, man. But they definitely went all in on if we're going to lose this game, it's going to be because of anybody not named Trace Jackson Davis. And um, did nobody – I mean, it didn't help that Xavier Johnson got hurt in the first half either, but I mean, the game was already well in hand when that happened. But, uh, yeah, I, I mean – that was quite the that was quite the environment, man. I picked quite the day to be there because when that place gets going, it's 
it's uh, it it escalates quickly. Did you get there earlier not early enough for the Rock Chalk Jayhawk? You know, pre intro video, teams coming out on the floor and everything. Did you get? Did yes, you have to sway I, back and forth? Yeah, no, okay. I did not. I did not sway back and forth because I was sitting a few seats down from the Indiana athletic director. Oh. One row behind you, you should have put your head. arm around that but. person and swayed back and forth and see if they would join <laughs> with you just to, you know, Hey, when in Rome. Yeah, I uh, know. I, that thought did not cross my mind, mm. but, uh, just mostly because of my surroundings, but okay. I was, I was mostly surprised by the amount of Indiana fans that were in there. Um, the Kansas people that I talked to were like, this is the most visiting fans we've ever seen in here. Even when Hoiberg and Prome had really good Iowa State teams, we never saw this many visiting people here. And yeah, that was probably the, the aside from the result, those were the biggest surprise. I believe a it. A whole lot of IU people would feel that. All right, let's, uh, let's talk about what happened on Saturday night because there's part of me that believes that it was a missed opportunity. I get coming off finals week, that first game is always scary to coaches, whether you be at home, road, or neutral, because you don't know what you're going to get because you've had kind of a quirky schedule. But before we talk about Nebraska, let's talk about Kansas State. They exposed, not really exposed, they kind of reminded everyone of the limitations of Nebraska by their length and their athleticism. Is Is Kansas State, in your opinion, the best team Nebraska's played so far this year? Um, well, I don't think they're, I don't think they're better than, I don't think they're better than Purdue or, or I should take that non-conference, non-conference, non-conference. Yeah. I think that's, yeah, probably. Yeah. Um, pretty close with them. And I don't, yeah, them and St. John's on paper. I don't know what that would come out to be, but yeah, Kansas state looked a whole lot better than I thought they'd look. Um, that was probably in part to how lackadaisical Nebraska looked for a majority of the game. But uh, that's a that's a solid squad, um, and especially with you know guys like John, Keontae Johnson had a huge game. I don't know how I feel about that point guard. He was pulling some shots where if I was on his team, I wouldn't be his biggest fan. But they got some good pieces, and they didn't even they played a pretty small rotation too, and yeah. they still uh, and they still you know controlled the game throughout. Uh, and people, you know shiver a little bit when they look at Johnson. He could have been here if uh, he could have got cleared. But now let's get to the to the heart of this. So Nebraska's 6-6. Six and six. And again, I think it's a little bit of a missed opportunity because you built up the goodwill with Creighton. The way you played against Purdue, you had an opportunity against Kansas State, which, which looks like they could be an NCAA tournament team. But why was Nebraska so bad on Saturday night, Jacob? I mean, what was it that they just... I don't know. Couldn't hit jump shots. It, 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 it was a befuddling, frustrating game. But why do you think they were so bad Saturday night? Uh, I think, I think, I mean, Derek Walker and Fred Hoiberg after, I mean, Derek Walker put it best. He said straight up, they got punked. Um, and, you know, Fred in his post game comments, he was like, we're not talented enough. We're not good enough to get outworked and win games. They have to, they have to win games by, grinding it out, being the team that's working hard from start to finish. And Kansas State just flat out outworked them, especially in that first half. I was I was worried that we were teetering on the brink of a, that St. John's game under Miles where it was a and one mixtape tour clown show when they kept on throwing down alley oop alley oop dunk. I mean that was I mean it was teetering on getting getting ugly. But I mean it was I mean, they just flat out got outworked, and they're not going to win games if they're if they're not the hardest working team on the floor. I, w- I was telling Gary this before we went on the air. Fred seemed really pissed. You mentioned his post game, and part of I look at that. You, you can look at it in two different ways, and I want to see where you're at on this, Jacob. I like it for the reason that I think he does feel this team has a chance to be different than any other team that he's had there at Nebraska. And so that was, you know, kind of what we've just been talking about, a missed opportunity as Sharpie mentions. But so that's where I could be cool with, you know, Fred having a little more emotion after what he saw and being, you know, that disappointed where it kind of came out. His tone just seemed to be a little bit more, a little bit more emotional or a little bit more definitive than what we've seen in the past. Now, the, the thing that worries me is, you know, a lot of people would dub this as a make or break season for Fred. And then I sometimes get a little worried that maybe he's starting to feel some pressure, even though I think we could all look at the start of the season and say, Hey, this is still probably better than we anticipated to this point of the year. What did you 
takeaway from from Fred, just his overall demeanor after this game? Do you feel like it is more expectation of what this team could be, or is there a little bit of maybe feeling that pressure? I think it's kind of a mix of the both. I mean, just to contrast the two coaches after that game, Fred couldn't get off that court fast enough. He was stone-faced, yeah. looked pissed, walking back to the locker room, while Jerome Tang is standing on one of the free throw lines, dancing while the K-State marching band plays Wabash Cannonball, and the place is going nuts. Mm -hmm. And it could not have been two more contrasting like moods from the coaches. And, I mean, you could tell Fred was, Fred was pissed off. And I think it's a perfect mixture of a missed opportunity, a mm -hmm. game where it could be like, hey, we had this momentum. It's not just a fugazi. We can, we can go do this. And also a part of, you know, just think of Fred's history in that building. He won back-to-back -back Big 12 mm -hmm. championships in that building. Arguably the highest of his coaching highs were in that building. And he goes back for the first time and gets punked by a first-year coach who is dancing on the court after beating his team. I mean, just I think it's a perfect, a perfect mixture of, all right, you beat Creighton. What else can you do? And here's a little momentum. What can you do with that? And that, I mean, I got a text from a friend of mine whose family's had season tickets since, since PBA opened. And no one should ever watch The Godfather Three, but in The Godfather Three, the famous line is, "Just when I thought I was, just when I thought I was out, they pulled me yeah. back in." Yeah. And he, and he texted me the flip flop of, "Just when I thought I was in, they pushed me back out." Yeah. <laughs> no, I, I think that's great because you have made believers of some people, but it yeah. has to be more than playing hard, okay? And I said that last week is now they need victories. They've established that they're different, but now you need victories. What if I would have told you? Or I, or I would play a game with you. Nebraska's going to have a guard that's going to play 19 minutes and score nine points, and they're going to have a guard that's going to play 24 minutes and score four points. Which one of those is Jamarcus Lawrence? Which one of those is Sam Griesel? What happened with Sam on Saturday night? I know there were a couple of bad decisions with the basketball dribbling to the corner where he got trapped, but he went to the bench with a little over seven minutes to go and didn't come back. What do you think happened there? Um, I think it was just playing the matchups. Um, I mean, we talked about this on the podcast last week with Padilla. We thought how, how Kansas State pressured him was going to be a big factor because, I mean, he's their one true ball handler. And, you know, Jerome Tang coming from Baylor, you know, you know how Baylor defends. And I, I was worried they were going to get after him and pressure him to make some bad decisions. And they kind of did just that. And, you know, Jamarcus Lawrence, Credit to him, true freshman, definitely the best we've seen from him so far. He's a good athlete, good shooter. He played, he defended hard, and given what they were doing, Fred just rolled with who he thought would give him the best chance to mount a little comeback. And you know they 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 had their run at the end, but it, you know it, it fizzled out. But I mean, I think uh, I don't think I don't think anything particularly. I mean, just just decision making and and the matchup probably more than anything. There was a moment in the game, I think it got to 59-50, uh, where Nebraska cut in, they forced K-State to call a timeout. And I think they got it even as close as seven, a little bit further after. But when they get to that point where it did seem like all of a sudden they kind of had found something, a little bit of a run there. At that point, based on what you'd seen, Jacob, were you feeling like, okay, you know, maybe with all of the – the crap, you know, that, that took place in the, in the first half that the Nebraska was starting to figure it out. I mean, was there, was there some confidence there that this thing could come down to the, you know, the final possession or two, or did you just kind of feel like, all right, this is just, you know, kind of their, their last gasp and it, the score kind of turned out the way that you thought it would, even at that moment. Kind of felt like a last gasp to me because just because, I mean, just because of the guys that were on the court, um, you know, like Riesel on the bench for the last yeah. seven minutes of the game, Walker could never really get going. And then you look out on the court and Emmanuel Bandamel is jacking very, very ill-advised threes when they're trying to make a run into it. You got Lawrence out there. You're like true freshman in his first big minutes. And you just, and yeah, kind of just felt like a last gas, you know, effort. And it was, it, it, you know, that was encouraging. It was definitely mm -hmm. the most encouraging mm -hmm. stretch of the game. They didn't back down. And we've said it all year about the team. They fight, they fight hard, but, um, you 
you got you got to start and finish. You know the the old adage of it's not how you start, it's how you finish. Most of the time, you got to do both. And uh, they tried to finish, but the start just dug them in too big of a hole. Jacob Bigelow joining us here on Mornings with Sharp and Handley. Uh, tell me right now, it's the nineteenth of December. He's played a lot of basketball at Nebraska, and there were you know across the board outside of Breidenbach, who was in double figures. Nebraska couldn't hit a jump shot. So the offense was challenged beyond belief. They they don't shoot real well, and then you turn it over. It's just a complete mess. And, and Derek Walker will never want to play against K-State again because back-to-back years he's had poor games against them. But one guy that I'm really wondering about, because I, I don't worry about Walker. Walker's going to be fine. I actually don't worry about Sam. I think Sam's going to have to get used to Jacob, the St. John's and the K-States that will get up on you. Okay, he's still adjusting to that. But there's another. they have to find that third consistent score. And you thought at times it would be Wiltshire. Tell me on December 19th, what kind of player C.J. Wiltshire is? Uh, I think the just plain and simple, I think he's lost right now. Um, he's, he's shown us flashes of what the fan base wants him to be, what the coaching staff wants him to be. Um, but I just don't know. I mean, he's – I mean, I – He's chasing right now. He's chasing hard. He's looking for looking to find a shot, like hoping just for one to go in and go on a little run or or something. And I mean, I don't. I he's he's just lost right now. And it's it's you know you you don't want to see that from anybody. Um, but he's trying to find find that shot. And I don't know what it is, but I feel like every shot he takes is off balance. He's either leaning into it or it's you know one dribble like one dribble. I've never. I mean he. I feel like he used to love like catch and shoot corner threes and that used to be like his bread and butter. But now I feel like every shot he's taken is off balance and I don't know what, what he needs to do to try to find that shot again. But I mean, he's definitely, uh, he's definitely lost right now. We were talking about the, the MT that takes place. They take on Queens tomorrow night and then you get back into big 10 competition. Iowa at home. Is, is this another kind of, measuring stick moment not necessarily the game against queens tomorrow but how nebraska handles the whole you know can't let that performance against k-state you know knock you down even further i mean in your opinion is this another sort of you know interesting developmental moment for this particular team and you know where's your confidence level on, on how they sort of come out and respond um, I think it's definitely it's definitely a big moment um, that Iowa game I think is like a 630 uh, tip off um, you know, people are going to show up just because it's Nebraska, Iowa. Um, I don't think it'll be like the atmosphere we saw against Purdue, obviously, but I mean, it's going to, you know, Iowa has kind of been, I mean, you know, Fred hasn't won nearly as many games as he'd like to, but I feel like Iowa has been kind of like the Grim Reaper of sorts. Like, you know, they beat him in that first year, but I feel like whenever, Whenever they've gone up against a Fred Nebraska team, they've beat them and they've beat them bad. Um, and you know, people at Iowa State called him the Hawkeye Killer because of how how much he, you know, how well he did against Iowa there. Uh, it has definitely not been the same here at Nebraska. Um, but like you said, I mean, you can't let that bad performance, um, you know, clog you. It's got to be on to the next game. Uh, definitely, you know. One game at I mean all the all the coach right. applies here. All the coach speak, but one yeah. game at a time. One game at one game at a time on to the next one. I mean, you know, Queens Queens is Queens is no slouch, but I mean it should just be business as usual and then you're and then you're into the grind, man. You're into mm-hmm. the grind for from until February until February and March and you know, there's there's no step overs in the Big Ten. So you just gotta you just gotta buckle up. Hunker, hunker down and just take care of business to the best of your ability. That sounds like a little, uh, you went into coach mode there. I like that. I did. Uh, yeah. It applies. I, I, it's almost like I wanted to be a coach for a couple of years um, <laughs> and spend some time around some coaches, but yeah. Oh. So well, good, good stuff. I'm glad you had a, a fun basketball uh, weekend um, and uh, have a, a wonderful holiday season. We will, uh, we will talk to you in the uh, new year when we'll see uh, after a stretch of big 10 games where Nebraska is at. Absolutely. Sounds good, guys. Happy holidays to you guys, hey. too. Uh, appreciate you having me on to talk a little ball every now and again. Thanks, guys. That's uh, Jacob Thanks, Bigelow. You can follow him on Twitter. Jacob A. Bigelow. Again, Nebraska plays about 6.30 tomorrow against Queens. From he was Charlotte. on a roll. Yeah. I, I, I'm, he's, uh, he's fitting into his role on his weekly spot really he likes well. It. Wow.
I do not, I don't ask that last question because it's like, oh, it's a panic time. But it seems like every few games, there's been moments like, okay, let's see if there is there growth compared to what we saw the last few years under Fred Hoiberg. And I'm not ready to say, because what are, what are really the expectations right now of this team? But, and I'm not trying to say, oh, they, they lose to Queens, but then having Iowa looming, you know, a week after that, it's, it's, it's an important stretch. It's, I'm not trying to say it's critical. And if Nebraska goes, you know, one and two, these next three games, all of a sudden, yeah, okay. It's going to be exact same thing, but it's just another, it's another discovery moment for this, for this team after what happened on Saturday. That question might be saved for the next segment. Yeah, we'll, yeah. we'll try yeah. to figure out That's when uh, Joel joins us, uh, where the level of Creighton is right now, because they've lost six in a row. Uh, they've completely, John Rothstein loves Creighton. They got him out of his top 45 this morning. Uh, wow. But they face a stretch, three home games. They finally play at home. Been mm-hmm. a weird schedule. Um, three home games over 18 days. When they put their head on their pillow after the stretch of Butler, DePaul, Seton Hall, they better be three and one in the Big East. Mm-hmm. Um, but they come home to play uh, Butler on uh, Thursday night. Joel's going to join us here in a, a little bit. There is some recruiting news uh, involving Nebraska, and also we're getting clarification on who's in school and who's not. Good on LPS. <laughs> Learning in the capital city. That'll They're work. still in school. I'll tell you more about that when we come back on the mornings with Sharp and Hanley on 1620 The Zone. Hey, let me tell you about my good friends at Woodhouse Buick GMC, located 119th and I. Now, the weather is taking a turn for the worst outside. And you're thinking, well, winter is officially here on Wednesday, and i got to have a car that's going to be manageable. Maybe that remote start, maybe that 4x4, four four, that traction that I need. Well, you can find it right now at Woodhouse Buick GMC. Large indoor showroom. You can shop during the cold weather, 119th and I, all the new and pre-owned inventory, the stylish SUVs that fit the whole family comfortably, or even those capable trucks that get it done for pleasure or for business. Quite frankly, Woodhouse Buick GMC has something for everyone and they've made it easy, whether it be in person or online. Now, you can go online where you can chat with a sales team member, fill out a credit application, purchase a vehicle, set up a test drive, all of that stuff right at your fingertips at WoodhouseBuickGMC.com. So stay safe and warm this winter in a new vehicle from Woodhouse Buick GMC, something that gives you even a heated steering wheel and a traction selection system. You'll find it. Shop Woodhouse Buick GMC first. The huge indoor showroom, 119th and I, or online at WoodhouseBuickGMC.com. GMC, we are professional grade. <laughs> Mornings with Sharp and Hanley on 1620 The Zone and 1620thezone.com with Gary Sharp and Nick Hanley. Mornings on 1620 The Zone is brought to you by MD West One Orthopedics, Neurosurgery, and Spine. The Connor Happer Show. Would you rather know the lyrics to every song ever by heart or be handed $5,000 cash? $5,000. In what instance would knowing the lyrics to any heart song benefit me? No, not heart not heart songs. Like, the, know the songs. By the band Heart. No, like by heart. Like, oh, oh <laughs> dumbass. <laughs> that's fair. That's, that's a fair critique by you. The Connor Happer Show. Weekdays from 10 to 2 on 1620 The Zone. Your Omaha area forecast from a Godfather's Pizza Weather Center and KETV News Watch 7 on 1620 The Zone. Cloudy and cool for your Monday. Temperatures today up near 30 degrees in Omaha, but still feeling like the low to mid-20s. A chance of snow arriving as we head throughout the morning and into this afternoon. Snow remains light with up to an inch possible in Omaha. Gusts today up to 20 miles an hour out of the southeast. Shifting out of the northwest as we head on into tonight. Gradual clearing for Monday night and overnight low near 2, but feeling like 10 below zero. I'm meteorologist Caitlin Harvey with KETV Newswatch 7. Mornings with Sharp and Handley, brought to you by MD West One Orthopedics, Neurosurgery, and Spine on 1620 The Zone. Want to know what CBDs and Kratom can do for you? Then stop by any 42 Degrees location. Talk to our knowledgeable and friendly staff and see why we are the source for all your Kratom and CBD needs. 42 Degrees, by your mom's house. The Blue Jay Zone is brought to you by Barry Law. We're in it to win it. Duncan McGuire led all of men's college soccer in goals scored in 2022, and his nine postseason goals helped the Blue Jays into the College Cup. McGuire is now one of three finalists for the Mac Herman Trophy for the nation's best soccer player. The trophy will be announced at the Missouri Athletic Club in St. Louis on January 6th. If McGuire wins, he will be the school's second, along with McGuire's head coach, Johnny Torres, who won the honor in 1997. Winning 
comes without a guarantee. Focus, discipline, and extraordinary effort make winning more likely. Sometimes our greatest wins come from major setbacks. Coming back from a serious injury is a win that requires teamwork. At Barry Law, we're in it to win it. If you have been seriously injured in an accident, call Barry Law today. 402-999-7777. This is Scott Schultz from Host Coffee. 2022 marks our 50th year and business has never been better. We are rapidly growing and adding new customers, which means we need new route drivers and service technicians. We have new jobs for those new to the industry with little or no experience and new careers that require knowledge in the coffee and vending world. There's a good chance we have just what you need in a new job. Host Coffee offers competitive pay and understands the work-life balance. Apply today at hostcoffee.net slash careers and join our team. Sometimes takeout food just doesn't cut it. Sometimes you want to come in, sit down, and relax while you eat a down-home stick-to-your-ribs meal. The kind of meal you'll find at Shug's Comfort Food Restaurant in Bellevue. It's homemade soul food made fresh every day. Make some new friends and find yourself feeling like you're right at home with a menu that features everything from fried chicken and gizzards, catfish fillets, and Nine Nice Peach Cobbler. Shug's Comfort Food Restaurant on Mission Avenue in Old Town Bellevue. Listen to the Woodhouse Auto Family Blue Jays Shoot Around and Overtime Shows, the Creighton Men's Basketball Pregame and Postgame Shows on 1620 The Zone. The Woodhouse Auto Family Blue Jays Shoot Around and Overtime Shows are also presented by Burton AC Heating, Plumbing, and More, by Barry Law, by Union Bank and Trust, and by DJ's Dugout. Before and after each Creighton game, exclusively on your home for the Creighton Blue Jays, 1620 The Zone, 1620 The Zone mobile app, and 1620thezone.com. Acura of Omaha has more than 100 quality pre-owned vehicles with most priced thousands below market value. Get our best price in just minutes at AcuraofOmaha.com. That's AcuraofOmaha.com. I'm Gary Sharp. It is Maverick Game Day on News Talk 1290 Coil. The Maverick basketball team kicks off the summer league season against the Pioneers of Denver. Last year, it came down to a buzzer beater. Denver off to their best start of the year. The Mavs open up with a big one coming up tonight on News Talk 1290 Coil. 6.30 pregame, 7 o'clock tip-off. Make it a great fall season. Head to KublerVision.com today to request a consultation. Now back to mornings with Sharp and Hamlet on 1620 The Zone. This morning, we're going to run out of time to uh, break down a 13-year-old swing. What uh, swing that is from this weekend? Uh, Charlie Woods playing with his dad. It's did you know it's more Rory like? Did you watch his approach on the on the tee box more Rory like than it is it's old father. Kid might be okay. Yeah. All right, not everybody is out for holiday break. Steve says LPS has regular school days today and tomorrow, and finals Wednesday and Thursday. Friday is the first day of winter break. Mm-hmm. Good on LPS. Uh, that sounds right. That um, That's what I'm used to. They should be learning. They should uh, be. Back Mike, in my day. Mike says Bellevue Public in classes until uh, Wednesday. Yeah. For all of you who have this entire week off, enjoy the F out of that because that's not normal. Uh, Bob says one of our favorites from uh, Cross County is still in school until tomorrow at 1. And that's still pretty good. Hmm. Bob? Yeah. Merry, Merry Christmas and Happy New Year to you. Bob is very busy. John says in the Equitable Bank inbox, Nebraska public schools are required to have students in attendance for a certain number of days each year. LPS is just padding that number by a couple of days this week. There is no learning going on. Oh, not at all. <laughs> no. Oh, yeah. That, that last week is yeah. great. Hey, this is a lot let, of movie days. Let's be honest. I, I said this right when we began this morning is we are in a two week stretch here where nothing gets done. You just ride it through the holidays. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, again, Everybody, this station will be best of all next week. Everybody is off. I think everybody's off, right? Yes, pretty much. Look at that, Nick. You join, and all of a sudden you get a week's vacation. It's thank you because I, I fought for you because they were going to make you do a week uh, by yourself to introduce yourself Gosh. to sixteen twenty. Thank you so much, man. So I got you out. You're a man so of the you people. Have your wisdom teeth pulled. Mm -hmm. uh, so here at some point this morning or this afternoon in South Dakota, uh, our offensive lineman Jason. Uh, man, you had it earlier. Had it earlier. Is it uh, Ma mega cheese? No, not mega cheese. 
That's my fault. We were talking about mac and cheese during the break. I hope St. Lawrence doesn't have any Russians on their <laughs> roster. <laughs> it just escapes me. For that Jason guy. Yeah. Deer off? No. Who? No, Deer- I was talking Deerdorf? about. <laughs> Dan, Dan Deerdorf. Jason Machizak. Machizak. There you go. There you go. Yeah. Machizak, so yeah. he's from Machizak. Pierre, South Dakota. 6'4", 320. He had committed to North Dakota. All of a sudden, he's in this three-week run. The, an un, you know, a hidden guy that Nebraska sees and goes, hmm. He's going to make his decision today. He's a little old school. 6'4", 320, that's a big boy. That's a big boy coming from South Dakota. I think Nebraska's in a good spot there. Uh, This is the one that everybody's paying attention to. And I feel like I'm obligated to say Caden Proctor now has crystal balls all over the place for Alabama. The five-star from Des Moines, the offensive lineman who's been committed to Iowa for a while, looks like he's going to flip to uh, Alabama. Uh, A.J. Cornelius, who is the Rhode Island transfer, who... I mean, offensive linemen in the portal that are at that level, oh, love them long time. Mm-hmm. But you might not be able to get them. You might have to love them from afar. Yeah. Which can be awkward. That's today, right? Well, he is going to make his decision on Wednesday. Oh, Wednesday. Okay. So he has visited Nebraska, Ohio State, Oregon, Tennessee in the last two weeks. Jesus. Uh, I think he was just at Tennessee this weekend. Uh, I think Nebraska had a good push for him, and then he started to go elsewhere. So we'll see on Wednesday. I mean, that would be a monster, monster pickup for uh, Nebraska. Was Nebraska the first? Yeah, they were the first of those see, four. That's, that's where you hope you set that amazing but, but you know what? No, 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 no. Oh, you'll be the last Grant, one. No, no. Those guys are rare. Somebody that has that kind of ability that's in the portal offensive line that you believe can come in and be a 12-game starter. High school, high school, high school, high school. Yeah. High school, high school, mm-hmm. high school, high school, high school, high school, high school. Yeah, you're right. Okay. I'm no offensive line coach. I look like one. High school, high school, high school is the only way that Nebraska is going to get this turned around. But if you could get one, you tell me no. Well, you'd get one. Yeah, that's. But, I'm not saying but, build it off. But of that. you can't be relying on guys out of the. Well, pool. yeah. No, I'm with you there. But if he, if Cornelius had decided to say yeah to Nebraska, I'll applaud that. Yeah, no one's going to say no. I mean, that's not the that's the point. It's just building in the high school yeah. with high school kids and developing them on the offensive line. I'm with you there. I mean, you're, you're, you're two portal guys from last year. One hardly played, and the other is already gone. And he hardly played due to injury. Right. right. Joel Lorenzi, he is uh, healthy. The weather, he didn't get to go to Milwaukee. Had to stay here. Might have Milwaukee's been, come to him. Yeah, might have been okay, though. Uh, Creighton lost their sixth in a row on Friday night against Marquette. And now what's next? He'll join us coming up on 1620 The Zone. Gary Sharp, Nick Hanley. Jimmy Chavez. Mornings with Sharp and Hanley. Weekdays 6 to 10. On 1620 The Zone and 1620thezone.com. The best way to catch all the action is on 1620 The Zone. And no line for the bathroom. Hey, everybody, it's Michael Savit for Rotella's Italian Bakery. Happy holidays. From Rotella's. We hope all your gathering with your family and your friends are merry and bright. From everyone at Rotella's Italian Bakery, we want to wish you a very happy holidays because this is the time for family and gatherings. And when you get together, what are you going to do? You're going to eat. Food is awesome during the holidays. And you know, you want to make sure you have the best sides as well. Whether you need to make some stuffing, or you just need some bread for a side, or you need dinner rolls, the best place to do it is Rotella's Italian Bakery. I have to be honest, you know, I had never had Rotella's before moving to Nebraska, and it was a tradition in my wife's family, and now it's a tradition in my family to always have at least one loaf of Rotella's bakery bread right there in the bread box and ready to go. So we want you to have a great happy holidays. Rotella's is wishing you a happy holidays. Make sure all your gatherings are awesome by having Rotella's Italian bakery bread. Head over to 108th in Harrison or one of your local grocery stores. It's 100 years of tradition from all of us at Rotella's Bakery wishing you a happy holidays. This week, Zone has five great deals half off. That's right. Each day this week, we'll have a new deal half off that is perfect for those last minute gift ideas. You'll find deals from Early Bird, Le Terre, Ted and Wally's Ultra Premium Ice Cream, Shug's Comfort Food, and Palm Beach Tan, all for half off. Make sure to log on at 9 a.m. each day to see what deal we have available because these half off deals will go fast. Head to 1620thezone.com and click deals now. 
This is Scott Schultz from Host Coffee. 2022 marks our 50th year and business has never been better. We are rapidly growing and adding new customers, which means we need new route drivers and service technicians. We have new jobs for those new to the industry with little or no experience and new careers that require knowledge in the coffee and vending world. There's a good chance we have just what you need in a new job. Host Coffee offers competitive pay and understands the work-life balance. Apply today at hostcoffee.net slash careers and join our team. Hey, everybody, it's Gary Sharp. Join me for We Got a Podcast, driven by Woodhouse Auto Family. We get more in-depth. Have a guest or two and drop nuggets of info you haven't heard anywhere else. Join us for We Got a Podcast, driven by Woodhouse Auto Family, every Friday in the show page on 1620thezone.com or wherever you listen to your podcast. Hi, this is Doug Nodgard with Equitable Bank. Great service never goes out of style. When the digital age dawned, many said computers would be able to handle many of the interactions that used to take a person. Boy, were they wrong. How many times have you called your bank and gotten a recording to press one or two? Not at Equitable. Not only does Equitable answer your call in the first ring, it's answered by a human being. That's because Equitable Bank values its customers. Equitable Bank, we take banking personally, member FDIC. Come visit Omaha's little corner of France for mouth-watering appetizers and entrees, plus melt-in-your-mouth desserts. Pick up your holiday gift cards today or reserve their party room for your holiday gatherings. Les Voltaire will make you feel right at home, just like they've been doing for more than two decades. Les Voltaire, just off 156th and West Dodge Road in the Pepperwood Village and at LesVoltaireOmaha.com. Make New Year's reservations now for their 5.30 or 8.30 seatings. More info at LeVoltaireOmaha.com. And we're back. Mornings with Sharp and Hammond. Here's Gary, Nick, and Jimmy on 1620 The Zone. Joel Lorenzi from the uh, World Herald, who would probably like us to talk more about his fantasy basketball team when Jokic goes for 20 rebounds in the first half last night, ends up with 27, uh, 40, 27, and 10. Nice little triple double. Good morning, sir. Good morning, Gary. And man, let's talk about it because <laughs> I was really having some bad fortune on the fantasy because um, the first few weeks, well, one, let's, let's talk about how I drafted Cade and now he's out for the year with like the, like, what did he have, surgery on his shin or something like yep, that? Yep. Something I had never heard of. Um, and then, I, I mean, I had like a dozen dudes out between the uh, first few weeks. I mean, Dame has been out like on several occasions like i've had bad fortune pascal was out um a couple of dudes had covid like i i needed this week man because dudes keep beating me that should not be beating me man hey that you must have but you've you've rallied though to have devin booker as well um i mean those are your two probably your two top guys but book had you know in a wild game between the suns and the pels the other night he had 58 yeah and i, I watching that game Watching that game was insane in real time because uh, the Pelicans, to me, are a better team, and um, they should have lost that game. If Brandon Ingram was playing, uh, he's just there now. I, I don't think they would have lost that game because, I mean, as good a job as Dyson Daniels or as good as, he, as Dyson Daniels tried to defend Devin Booker in those final few minutes, he got a, a couple of good stops. Um, he, he ends up being like the third or fourth scorer option on the floor. But it's not ideal, um, and you're left for Zion – elbow iso and yeah. that only gets you so far when the defense is, is focusing on that so you guys want to keep i mean we could delay the creighton conversation oh no there's no no because no, all i'm the saying NBA is, is wild right now i don't know the Knicks have won right. seven in a row all of a sudden orlando is winning i mean the the nba i think joel and i've talked about this before nick the nba right now is in such a good spot with the amount of talent yeah. the young talent blended with some veterans I mean, the, the NBA is uh, is really, really good on a nightly basis right now. Yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm just I'm pushing the Creighton thing back as far as we can. <laughs> sure, and, and, and thank you for that. But, um, you know, the, uh, you're, you're right. Like, you could turn – I'm so glad I have League Pass. I'm happier to have League Pass now than any other year, especially with um, how dysfunctional it usually is. Not, not to say it's not dysfunctional this year, but um, you turn on most games, the games that are not blacked out in Omaha, which are – quite right. a few um and you can you can find a player that you love to watch like you just watch the thunder and their shape and you're going to see shade gilders alexander have him probably the best year of his career you could watch no the magic that's one of my favorite league pass teams you see paulo you see franz wagner you see bobo like 
there are fun dudes to watch on probably any team. I mean, I was tuned into the Wizards the other day, like <laughs> just because because I like cools and um, it's just. I, I did want to see Kawhi kill. I'm, I'm glad I got to see Kawhi kill the other night against the Wizards. That's that's one of my guys who who I've been rocking with. And um, <laughs> man, just there's just uh, so many players in this league. Man, the, the talent is overflowing, this, and that's why when you get into a debate with me, I'm typically going to side with the guys who have played the last 20 years over back in the day when the shorts were were uncomfortably short and the TVs were black and white. So. <laughs> Uh, so we got. Are we going to save the the MJ LeBron yeah. debate later? Okay, fine. Yeah, we can. But it's Brian. So uh, right. you know, right. Joel, I want to. I want to go to this. I, I thought this tweet said more than it, it spoke volumes of the game. This, this was a tweet you had, kind of late in the game, where you said, "Pretty discouraging right. that Creighton's freshman, who's only played basketball for a handful of years, has probably responded to Marquette's intensity better than anyone." I bring it up because it was disappointing. You know, we knew how how big this game was. And if you have, you know, some type of of resolve. And I was curious about the mentality of this team going into the game. And what you tweeted there, I think we all saw. It was a team that it just didn't have the punch and maybe the mentality that you really want to see this team have after they've been fighting it for the last couple of weeks where they needed something something good to happen. They needed to create that themselves yet. It just, it wasn't there. And I, I, I still walk away. And the only word I can use is disappointing. Yeah. And I think uh, you've seen that lack of fight for, uh, you know, the entire 40 minutes for, for most of these losses, probably all of them, except uh, maybe the Arizona loss. Cause that was before they realized they could really tumble. Um, but, but I think the Marquette game was its peak. Mm-hmm. And who's to say it won't get even worse? Uh, but the Marquette game was certainly its peak, and um, yeah, man, it was just it was something on my mind because obviously, like some people will will see, uh, and this is something that's come up in the base when I tell people like they need Colt Brenner back, they'd be like, "Well, look at Fred King's numbers," and um, I got to like explain to them like as well as King has played and um, his his numbers, like they're intangibles and uh, certain things you can impact yeah. on every given possession that Carl Brenner just does and, and King doesn't. Uh, but kudos to King because uh, he's probably been their best player in the last two games, mm-hmm. um, which is discouraging, like I said, when the dude has been playing basketball for less than a handful of years. And some of these dudes were were ranked in the 40s and 50s in high school. Um, it's just There's just a lack of desire to me, man. Um, not a lot of heart. I mean, these dudes talked about it. Um, over the past week, and yeah. and uh, you know our scrums, uh, they yeah. talked about Sharif Mitchell and, and Ryan Emhart. Each talked about you know heart and grit. And Ryan Emhart was like, you either got it or you don't. And going off that, um, I don't know how many of them truly have it or to what extent they have it, but it hasn't shown in these past few weeks, man. And um, for for Fred King, like like it's encouraging for his development. Sure, like it's mm-hmm. a good wrinkle when Paul Brennan comes back. But I don't know how many games you win with him probably being your best player that mm-hmm. night. So there's the part of Colt Brenner, I mean, on both ends of the floor. But it's not just him in the 11 jersey. I look at offense. Like that pick and roll that makes a Nemhard and Alexander go to another level is missing. But where is that next level? I, I think is now we're 12 games into this season. Where do you, Joel, see the sophomore guards? We thought after a promising freshman year that they would take the leap this year. What kind of a leap do you think they've taken? And where can they go? Where is their level? Because both of those guys at times look nothing like what we saw last year when they were at their peak. Yeah, and it's hard for me to say um, because you've seen the data through 12 games has been night and day, right? Like Mm -hmm. you've seen... Trey Alexander spaz and has uh, games where he shot his fair share of balls and he shot well. Um, and then Nemhard obviously might have had, I'd say probably uh, off the top of my head, a, t- a top two performance out of anybody on the scene this year when they played Arkansas yep. and Maui. Like, he was electric in that game. Um, and you don't see that every game. Granted, um, he's kind of, you know, deferred to being – 
the all-seeing eye and the playmaker that they need. Um, but at the same time, like, um, there have been games where he sh- he shot two shots and um, just didn't shoot well, and they probably needed him to step up. And he's looked, I guess you could call him broken through the past few games. Like seeing him miss point blank floaters and and um, really just you know not shoot the three well at all. I mean, none of them truly has uh, not consistently enough for anyone to notice. So um, I I can't. I can't speak to their jump. Like, you've mm-hmm. seen flashes, but I can't speak to a genuine jump. I kind of want to get in your, your thoughts uh, uh, during this stretch of Arthur Kaluma, too. You know, when you look at the guys that you would really feel would, would kind of carry this team, especially on some leaner nights offensively, what have you kind of taken away from the last four games with Art? Yeah, man. I thought uh... – what was it the BYU game? I think the BYU game was when he had his his best game of the mm-hmm. season. Uh, Twenty seven points, looked real comfortable, looked about as good as scouts would want him to. You know, because this is the guy that we talked about as a first rounder coming into the season. Yep. Obviously, the summer and his surgery kind of, you know, it slowed down his development and certainly hurt him a little bit. Um, so we knew it would take him time to get back to what people envision. Um, But, man, I've been disappointed, man, because this is a guy um, who I I was on that same train. You know, Kaluma could be a first-rounder. Obviously, a lot of it was based on projections and whether his jumper would improve, and some of that also falls into the summer. Um, It's not having uh, all of it. But, but man, like, his his worst classes are, like, really not pretty. And I thought – I think that BYU game was a turning point for him. I mean, it's yeah. been a turning point for this whole team. Like, they've really – you've seen once teams become, like, visibly more confident than them in the game, like, it really starts to take a toll on them yeah. throughout that 40 minutes. And I thought, uh, you know, him fouling out in that BYU game was probably deflating for him, man. And, yeah. um, like, if they win that game and he has, you know, the performance he has, I think you see a different trend to these two – few games. Like, obviously, the Marquette game would still be an uphill battle, but I think they win Arizona State handily uh, if in that alternate reality. And then, um, like, in the Marquette game, like, Omax Prosper is doing his thing, and I'm mm-hmm. thinking while I'm watching him, I'm like, yo, this is what I kind of expect Arthur Kaluma to be doing. Like, yeah, the stuff he's doing. Point. Um, yeah, and so, so I know that, uh, that could have been great to see either just real I'm, I've been disappointed, but I've also kind of kind of been patient in the back of my mind because I know the surgery and yeah. the stuff you have to keep in mind. But at a certain point, you start to think that all of these guys are being affected by one overbearing cloud that's, that's hanging yeah. over them. That And by the way, I think Shock has got something going. I mean, they have six guys in double figures and, and some newbies no that have yeah. bought in. Um, let's talk about a newbie because, you know, because of what he came here to Creighton with. And I saw him for – you know, three years in the Summit League. So I know how talented he he is, but he was on a, in a different league where you're not going to get touched every time you touch the ball. It's not as physical, so you can kind of have some space. But I'm talking about Baylor Shireman. You know where I'm going here, Joel. So right now he's kind of a walking double-double, but he seems to draw a lot of mm-hmm. scrutiny. I wonder, watching the game on Friday night, when he was really the only thing that was going in the first half, he tried to do then, it almost seemed like everything. And I know the yep. physicality really started to wear on him in that game, and it's going to be like that the rest of the Big East season. So 12 games in, when Kalkbrenner comes back whenever, what do you see Shireman looking like as now you've gotten a sample size of him playing at this level? What do you what do you think his role eventually will be moving forward in Big East play? Yeah, um, I don't know his usage will be. So I thought that game was unique. I think there'll be another game down the line where they maybe need him to have similar usage in a half, maybe. But um, yeah, I don't think that'll be a consistent thing. And the thing, like I went back and watched possessions of that half, and I thought, um, like they they did an interesting thing with that wrinkle where he's having the empty side post ups to start the game because I thought it was pretty fruitful at first. And then um, as Marquette started to like actually try, I guess, and like figure <laughs> figure out. Um, it, it started to, you know, become less fruitful. And, and so 
um, as the, the half went on, you're seeing Shaman, um, and I don't know if this was like communicated between them, but mm-hmm. you know, Shireman is like, it seems like the other guys are trying to give him space, trying to not complicate his space. Yep. And so when people are saying that they're standing around, like it seems like they're not trying to complicate his space. And so when he finally does have to give up the ball, because he doesn't have the most creative handle, right? Like he's not super shifty. Yeah. He uses his body a lot and it's a lot of counter dribbles and, and whatnot, reacting to the defense, reactionary dribbles. And so uh, when he finally decides to pick it up, <clears throat> guys are standing around because I think they don't want to complicate his facing. And some of it too was just him at a certain point throwing lazy passes. That's, that's not the first time you've seen that this year. And so um, it just became a nightmare and uh, constant turnovers, not just him, but, you know, Trey and, yeah. and R2. And so I think that's really what buried him. And then also Iguodaro and, and Omak became too much to bear and, they go in and run that essentially buries Creighton for the entire game. Um, and that was in the first half. And so uh, going forward, I think when Carl Brenner shows back up, because I think that makes, like you, you mentioned it earlier, that makes the, the pick and roll easier for for all of them. That's uh, that's a wrinkle they need because he just draws so much attention and he was shooting like 76% from the field when he went down. Like this, yeah. You can't deny the attention he gets and what it does for that offense. But I think Baylor – isn't meant to be. I think Baylor's meant to be a secondary or a third playmaker, probably secondary, um, and just get in where he fits in, get those boards, hit those big shots when he when he feels he has the green light. Like some of the stuff you saw early on. Um, who would have thought on December nineteenth, Nebraska and Creighton would have the same record? Oof. Well, that's what a lot of people are saying. That are, <laughs> cheer for the team that's in good, blue. It's a good hey, response. Should Joel, be a title the segment. <laughs> Joel, we appreciate it. Uh, we'll uh, we'll see you on Thursday night for uh, Butler and uh, Creighton, and uh, we'll talk to you after the holidays. Have a wonderful holiday uh, season, and uh, I'm glad you're with us. Hey, likewise, man. Thanks. Be good, my man. You too. Well, that's, uh, six in a row they play Butler on uh, Thursday night. Oof. Well, and, and you have so kind of kind of. The Mac and Fred could have said the same thing. Yeah. Word for word after the game. Creighton gets punked. They get beat up. They don't like to be touched. They're getting just hammered in the paint. And that's with a little bit of Kalkbrenner. But five of the last seven games, I think they've given up at least 40 points in the paint. Is they turned the ball over 18 times. They were sloppy with it. So what did I say after Arizona State? Sloppy, timid. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Trying to find if we're tough or not. What what did Fred what Fred could have said the same thing? No, he did. Nebraska turned the ball over eighteen times against Kansas State. Could have said we were sloppy, we were timid, and we were not tough. He flat out said they got their, you know what, kicked in all three. But that was Fred's words. But right. would you agree that Nebraska has displayed a little bit more of that toughness than Creighton here in the last month? Mentally, yeah, yes. that's yeah, yeah. I'm talking about the mentality, yeah. yeah. That's why I think he was so disappointed on Saturday. Felt like that that's where they were at least showing an identity. And then you, you know, now have a little bit of a relapse there. Yeah, I just there there's part of me and I'm not ready to go there because I would like to see like this week that you wonder, is it more than Kalkbrenner not being on the floor? Because if guys are talking about heart and toughness mm-hmm. and then they go out and they have that against Marquette, is it more than just elevens not in the lineup? Think- is there something else going on? Because they have they have fallen off the map. Yeah. And and there are just little things. Like they, they have enough talent that they're not they shouldn't just completely fall apart without a really good player coming mm-hmm. out of the lineup. No, so they're, they're I, talented around them enough. So I, 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 I agree. I, I watch them on Friday night and I thought they would bounce back. You know, my bad call on me. Is it more than just Kalkbrenner not being in the lineup? Is there other things that are going on? Because that's a team where everybody's expectations were. To top 10, flirting with a Final Four, mm-hmm. best ever. There was no reason to back down from it no. when you looked at it. Going through and, Maui even. And they are they're they don't resemble that at all. They look like a broken basketball yeah, team. 100%. And one guy coming back, I don't know if that completely fixes it, but mm-hmm. what would fix it is they got to be 3-1 and one in the Big East. Yep. In 18 days, when they start on Thursday night, they got to be 3-1. and one. Uh, That'll do it for the uh, show. Good show, everybody. Covered a lot of bases. Uh, be careful out there. The weather is... Uh, uh, playing a significant role in your commute today. Uh, we'll be back in again tomorrow. Probably we'll have some recruiting news and much more. And maybe after an incredible sports weekend, depending on what kind of football you like, 
Uh, we have one more football game tonight. And Baker Mayfield plays against the Packers. America's quarterback. There is something America's something quarterback. Is, something is bound to happen. Machizak. There we go. And he'll commit probably to Nebraska today. Hey. All right. For uh, Nick, for Jimmy, I'm Gary. Uh, Connor uh, is next with a lot of soccer talk about the uh, World Cup. And if you caught the tail end, <laughs> there was a uh, shot of a fan in the stands for Argentina. His wife was behind him, and she was not wearing a shirt. And it was not blurred out. And she's in trouble, apparently. No. It's all coming up next on the uh, crossover. We'll talk to you tomorrow at 6. Live from the 